72 of the world's most talented poker players with over $350 million in combined lifetime earnings will put everything on the line over eight months to compete for the title of the first ever GPL World Champions. Which team has what it takes? The Global Poker League starts now. Hello and welcome to the Global Poker League. We are live this Thursday evening. It is week five. I'm Laura Cornelius, joined by the GPL insider, Mr. Eric Danny. It is the final night of the week. We are heads up tonight for the Americas Conference, but we've already seen some excellent poker action already this week. Yeah, we've seen separation from two teams, Laura, from Moscow and Paris in the Eurasian Conference. We're through 15 games as of tonight, 15 matches. Ooh. That's a third of the season already. How did that go so quick? Right, let's take a look at what is coming up today. As we said, it's all about the Americas Conference. Heads up matches. So yeah, that first match, it's Tom Marchese for the New York Rounders. The Big Cheese up against Thiago Nishihima. That first match is match 48. It's kicking off at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central European time. So that's in around 30 minutes time. Second match of the day is Marc-Andre Ladousseur. The manager of the Montreal Nationals, he is up against Olivier Bousquet, who is the top scorer so far of the GPL. Match 49, it's at 12.30 Pacific, 3.30 Eastern or 9.30 Central European time. And the third and final match of the evening, we've had a slight change there. It is not Jake Cody anymore, it is Jonathan Little who will be playing uh, for the Las Vegas Moneymakers up against Kitty Quo for the San Francisco Rush. That is match 50 and it's up at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern, 12 a.m. Central European time. So some great heads up matches coming your way this evening into week five. I can't believe we've already had that many matches. Yeah, it's been very, very speedy, a speedy five weeks, but uh, yeah, week five ends tonight and that'll be 15 matches played for everyone. I think uh, the first match there, uh, Nishihima, pulled the big upset last week. Uh, winning two games to one against uh, Jonathan Jaffe against uh, San Francisco. So he'll be looking to really ride that wave. Tom Marchese, uh, great effort against uh, Bousquet last week. Yeah. Didn't get to win it, but he did get to finish third place this weekend at an Aria High Roller, which are now being called the Tom Marchese Open because he just <laughs> catches all of them. So that'll be intriguing to see uh, that battle there. That, that first battle will be very intriguing uh, to see who, who does what. It's a battle of first versus second suddenly as well. So Niki Hima played last week against, uh, well, he was... He's playing Marchese tonight. Mm -hmm. He's playing Bousquet last week. A few, a few weeks ago, few yeah. Weeks last ago, week sorry. he finished, uh, lost to ja or defeated Jaffe last week. Marchese, Jaffe, Bousquet. Obviously, Bousquet has got to be the toughest of his opponents out of all three. Yeah, I mean, I, I think Jonathan Jaffe as well. But Bousquet has been so, playing so well in this league, then obviously, yeah, that's got to be the choice. Uh, I, I think we'll see that in that second match tonight, how, uh, how Marc Andre Ladusser is going to have to you know, negotiate through uh, getting some points against uh, Olivier Bousquet. But yeah, I really think, let's not forget uh, that Jonathan Jaffe is one hell of a heads up player as well. I believe we might be seeing a bit more of uh, Jonathan Jaffe in action next week. So mm. he should be playing the heads up next week as well. I just We have to wait to find out who his opponent might be for that. So that's something to look forward to. Uh, and then uh, Marc-Andre Ladusser, manager of the Montreal Nationals. He's been playing uh, uh, this week as well. He played on Tuesday in the Six Max wasn't able to fare so well, only gathering one point out of a possible 14 for his side. Yeah, a bit of a misstep maybe in that second match. The first match was just wild. Anyone could have finished first, anyone could have finished sixth. We went through, I think it was 70 some hands before someone was out. So, you know, tough for that first match. Second match, um, I think he was happy that uh, that uh, Chance Corneth had to get to a party because at least he gained one point by, uh, <laughs> by Chance's uh, performance there. And uh, let's talk about yesterday because Tuesday was six max action. Yesterday was Eurasian heads up action and we saw some some great poker yesterday as well didn't we yeah we saw some controversies as well two mm -hmm. players playing at the table one negotiating it probably uh, better than the other igor kurganov faring very well against bill perkins of uh, the berlin bears perkins still picking up three points i think those were three big points that uh, they were happy with in uh, wayne jang's uh, case that didn't go over so well uh, difficulty trying to adjust to playing both live and online at the same time, where the difference is probably in in, uh, in uh, experience. Igor is just so used to those big moments where Wayne probably had tough, tough, uh, tougher time negotiating that. By the way, Wayne did finish ninth in that event, so congratulations to him. Yay. But the team manager, Selim Lin, finished fifth. So even, even when it comes to live poker, Selim is still on Go top. On, so good, good for her. You know. 
and Max Pescatori had his very first win for the Rome Emperors. Yeah, and it was great to see earlier today a picture with Walter Trekraricki and with Mustafa Kinnit celebrating the, uh, the fact that the team won their very first yeah. match. Uh, Mustafa very eager to play next week as well, so it'll be fun. And this could be the start of something really good for, uh, for the, the Rome Emperors, who still sit at the bottom, yeah. but when you have Mustafa Kinnit uh, showing up next week, you never know what can happen, and most likely some points are going to be on the board uh, from that team. Some lasagna. Mm. Right, let's head over to our commentary team of Sam Grafton and Griffin Benger. See what's going on with them over at the booth. Thank goodness it's not May the 4th anymore. <laughs> Thanks, Laura. I'm Griffin Benger, Sam Grafton. He hates when I introduce this. You guys know who we are by now, right? This is GPL Week 5. Uh, we're just closing out uh, the fifth week of the first season. Uh, a lot of great matches uh, this week. A lot of fun yesterday. But today, let today. me tell you, Nishihima is back. <laughs> and he is better than ever. He's playing against the big cheese to start things off. But first, I think, uh, are we going to go over some, uh, some highlights from yesterday? Yeah, let's take a That's look at what plan. happened yesterday for those who missed Boom. it. Uh, Wayne Zhang... Um, who was running deep in an event in Monte Carlo, taking on Max Pescatori, manager of the Rome Emperors. And it was Pescatori who got off to a first fast start in winning the first match. This was a four bet pot that the two of them played. Wayne Zhang, three betting ace jack of hearts, peeling the four bet and getting blown off a chop when Max Pescatori made a continuation bet. And then it came down to a big, big flip Ace King versus Jax. Wayne electing to five bet, call off the Ace King. But Pescatori held with the Jax, and that was 2 0. And now the manager was looking for the sweep. Yeah, uh, you know, a really poor start from Zhang. We talked about the distraction being deep in that 1K re entry. Um, this was a very interesting hand between Max and Wei Zhang. On the river, Max going for huge max value uh, and even said, I hope he has 7 9. Uh, Wayne waned his options, decided to call, and uh, was shown the ten, the bad news, having the exact hand he called. Uh, but the third match did end up going to Wayne Zhang in the end. But this was another example of uh, of Wayne just he's caught up being out of touch with the heads up flow. Yeah, he was uh, distracted. I mean, he didn't even win the tournament. We could have forgiven if the news had come in that he came first. What place did he get? He got, he got ninth place, so oh, not well, good enough, he was, Wayne. He was distracted playing online yeah. poker at the same time. Get out of my move. office, Wayne. Uh, so Bill Perkins and Igor Kurganov was the second match. Uh, one of the world's top pros against one of the world's most fun and exciting amateurs. Um, and Igor Kurganov, as we expected, making his skill edge felt for instance, in this hand, Bill Perkins bluffing with the nine high and Igor turning the jack high into a bluff, check raising all in on the river. A little smile from Bill Perkins. The match played Smirking in- Bill Perkins. Yeah, in great spirits from Bill, but uh, was understandably outclassed from Igor Kurganov, who, you know, was the number one draft pick after all for the London Royals. Yeah, and uh, Bill really showing his amateur, um, you know, moves in this particular hand, deciding to three, min three bet out of position with the king nine off. Facing a big four bet from Igor, deciding to peel, making top pair, and deciding he can't fold an inflated pot because of the pre-flop action. So a big misstep there for Bill, but he was able to get some momentum back. Yeah, in the third I mean match. the question at this point was, would it be nine points uh, for the London Royals uh, and a sweep? Uh, Bill Perkins turning fortuitous um, four here, um, turning trips. Igor couldn't get away from the King Deuce, and you know. Pleased to see that Bill did pick up at least three points uh, for his pluckiness in taking on uh, the world's top pros in the GPL format. Yeah, and very affable after the win, which is really nice. Filatov against uh, General Leia. General Leia, of course, playing from the Playground Poker Club where he's, uh, you know, been competing all week. Filatov in Monte Carlo, always working, always be working, these two. And uh, this was a huge flip in that first match. Yeah, Mike Leia um, winning this flip. Um, such a competitive nature, Mike Leo. We could really see him straining every sinew uh, to maximize uh, the amount of points he could get for the Paris Aviators and uh, did win this initial match, um, putting, they see, the tick mark on the board. Yeah, but the theme, theme of the match was really, uh, you know, Mike's 
uh, calling on the river, regardless of what Anatoly was betting. Uh, there was a lot of different sort of advanced strategies used over the course of this match. The first two matches saw a lot of uh, three betting light from weak hands, such as 10-5 suited. And then later on, a lot of different um, betting strategies on later streets. Filatov bluffing a lot of rivers, value betting a lot of rivers, and often big, put, polarizing his range and uh, putting, putting Mike in some tough spots. For sure, and Anatoly um, in this final match wanting to at least claw back three points for the Wolverines. Here, exactly what uh, Griffin was talking about, going for the overbet shove with the trips. Mike Leia took a strong line, check raising the Queen Nine, uh, weighed up his options, couldn't find the fold, and two games to one for Mike Leia and the Paris Aviators. Yeah, Paris Aviators, uh, you know, that was a particular sort of clash of the Titans situations. The Wolverines against the Aviators, two top teams in that division, really separating themselves from the rest of the uh, teams in that division, something that I'm sure Eric always loves to tell, talk to you about. Um, but yeah, six big points for the Aviators. Mike Leia really showing himself to be a huge threat in this league and really an interesting little dark horse for the Aviators amongst yeah. all that French talent. Well, we've talked about, you know, strength in depth. Mike Leia going as a fourth round draft pick but playing really like a first round draft pick across those three matches very very strong player and also great to have someone in your squad who's willing to take uh, on other players in the six max format and the heads up you know that flexibility uh, could be key as we enter the late stages of the season yeah flexibility is the name of the game with a guy like Mike Leah of course he's such a proficient uh, mixed game player as well uh, tons of uh, you know online titles to his name but there is a lot of great matches to come up today that don't just include General Leia and the likes of Anatoly Filatov. And Eric and Laura are going to tell you all about it. We will indeed, but not just yet. We're going to talk through the standings, I believe, first. We saw wins yesterday for the Emperors, the Aviators and the Royals. So I wonder where this leaves us in the standings. Let's find out. Let's find out, indeed. I don't know why we're speaking like this. <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, Mike Leo, obviously, uh, that just that last hand of the day, it was, so, uh, it was so exciting to watch his thought process there as he eventually decided to fold. He could have had the clean sweep, but he didn't. Yeah. He laughed it off. He laughed it off at he six points uh, going to the bank. So he was happy with that, uh, which leads him in first place. Uh, I'm sure he would have been much happier with 68, but at yep. 65, Fab Sewell will be very happy with those points. Motsko is still in second place at the moment, 64 points, just one point behind Laura. It's really a two-team race in this conference so far. The two teams really separating themselves from the, the group. You really, we see the Hong Kong Stars who have slowed down a bit, so we'll have to expect more points from them next week in order for them to maintain their status. The reason is the London Royals are starting to come along and come along very, very uh, well, uh, 13 points, at least 13 points uh, from that team this week. So really a good week for the London Royals who now sit in fourth Four points only ahead of the Berlin Bears and the Emperors at 41 points, believe it or not, an excited uh, bunch at 41 points. Things suddenly turning around and uh, I think Max Piscatore and the boys are going to be really excited to, for what's about to come. If Max hadn't scored those six points yesterday, they would have been in absolute dire trouble, wouldn't they? They'd been really stuck down at the bottom of the table, such a big gap between them. Yeah, and there's still 24 points out yeah. of first. So that's, I really do think at this point, first place is, is out of the picture for that team. That still could change if the, you know, if there's positives in the next few weeks. But I think for now, they're, concent you know, they're concentrating on gaining points, getting more points than losing points, and then they'll see what happens further down in, uh, in the season. Indeed. Uh, let's take a look at the America standings as well, because uh, it's all about America's action tonight. And we're going to be seeing the New York round of Tom Marchese in action very soon in the next, 20, 15, 20 minutes or so. Uh, so New York Rounders at 56 points. They have a bigger lead than the Aviators. Seven points clear of the Sao Paulo Mets. But absolutely amazing stuff to see the Sao Paulo Mets in second place, considering how they were doing just a couple weeks ago. Yeah, and a sweep tonight, and Sao Paulo would actually be first, in, you know, first position in the Americas Conference. They're both playing each other tonight. So really big points on the line for the Mets here. They want to keep that momentum going, as, as you just said. But yeah, if they sweep tonight, they are in first place in the Americas Conference just a week after being near the bottom yeah. for so long. Montreal Nationals at 48 points. Just one point behind them, though. Mark andre Ladusa up against Olivier Bousquet. That's the second match of today. And then two points behind that, we have the Rush San Francisco, who have done pretty well thanks to Tony Gregg this week as well. Uh, Los Angeles Sunset, 45 points. One point behind the Rush. 
uh, which is astounding, really, considering how many points Olivier Bousquet has made for the team. Yeah, and they'll be looking for him for more points tonight. If uh, they do uh, fairly well, they could surpass Montreal. So big game here for Olivier. It just seems that every time Olivier's in the lineup, he needs those points for that team. So he must be uh, getting a little frustrated himself just uh, picking up all those points for that team. The other players will have to start uh, gaining momentum as well. And then we've got the Las Vegas Moneymakers right at the bottom of the table. Only one win for them so far. Just two teams now with only one win under their belts, and that is the Las Vegas Moneymakers and the Rome Emperors. Yeah, and I think uh, Jonathan Little, unfortunately, not much time to prepare, but I'm sure he's been preparing all day. He's the type to spend a lot of time studying his opponents, probably looking at that Kitty Quo final table from the Aussie Millions earlier this year, trying to get some tells there, uh, because he understands that those are big points on the line. Just, uh, just a side note, uh, Sao Paulo, congratulations to Zhao Samao, who's now the number one ranked online poker player according to Poker uh, Pocket Fives. Wow. So congratulations to Zhao Samao, who just a few weeks ago, you know, had done really well online, but since his first time here in the league, just keeps on winning everything. So yeah. congrats to, to, to Zhao. Good. I, actually, I remember meeting Joao like years and years ago, and, and he did really well in an EPT, I think. And I remember thinking he's one to look out for. And indeed, or Cornelius. He is. I say, I know my stuff. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so Las Vegas moneymakers Jonathan Little, as we said, stepping in for Jake Cody this evening up against Kitty Quo. And you know what? If there's one man that's going to do his homework, his preparation. I feel it's Jonathan Little. Absolutely. <laughs> Let's take a look at the top scorers so far in the, the GPL. We mentioned it earlier. It's Olivier Bousquet right at the top, 27 points. And he could make a whole more nine points this evening, accelerating his lead on that top scorer chart. Nananoko is in the second spot with 24 points. Obviously, he didn't play this week on the GPL because he was too busy crushing the EPT Monaco main event. Yeah, 30, <laughs> uh, 30th place finish for, uh, at the EPT Grand Final, so congratulations to Nananoko, who's uh, scoring everywhere. Anatoly Filatov, we saw him in action last night, only able to score three points in a heads-up against Mike Leia, though. But he had a fantastic week last week, picking up pretty much all of those points, 24 points there. Uh, Felipe Ramos and Tyler Kenny in fourth and fifth place, who just love to battle it out against one another. Yeah, uh, Tyler and Bryn Kenny are brothers, but it does seem to be in the GPL. <laughs> yeah. the, the bosom brothers are Felipe yeah. Ramos and Tyler Kenny. I'm quite excited for those two to meet in real life for the first time. I think time. they're excited about that as well. I think Tyler <laughs> yeah. mentioned that he can't wait to meet Felipe. And knowing Felipe, he likes to meet everyone, so I'm sure the feeling is mutual. I know, I hope I'm there as well. And not forgetting, we had Anton Wig there at the bottom as yeah, well. Tied with Mike Leia, actually, so good on them. Uh, ah, both. okay, right. And we'll see Mike Leia back in action tonight, so he has the chance. Uh, no, sorry, no, off. we won't. <laughs> we saw him last night. <laughs> I'm going a bit loopy. Well, I'm Canadian, that's Marc Andre <laughs> Ladusor. <laughs> He's still playing. Uh, right, let's head over to the desk, back to Griffin and to Sam. Thanks, Eric. Thanks, Laura. Uh, this is the GPL, and uh, we have a slew of great matches tonight. Tiago Nishihima is going to open things up against the big cheddar cheese himself, the Gouda, Tom Marchese. Yeah, Tom Marchese, someone that has really impressed in the early weeks of the Global Poker League. Uh, we're used to his somewhat gnomic utterances on the webcam, sharing the odd little bit of uh, strategy. Uh, sometimes you can see all his face, sometimes just the top of his head, but we're guaranteed uh, top-level poker action. Yeah, I mean, he, you know, if he always gives the, the mice a little cheese, and that's what we need here. That's what we want here at the GPL. We want that thought process, but of course, this is a guy uh, who's used to that steadfast uh, focus on the table. Just got third in another one of those Aria 25Ks just this past weekend. I mean, this guy is all over those the circuit for those, just absolutely crushing. The win rate, phenomenal, and uh, he's someone that is so fun to watch. I think... I think we'll both agree, maybe the most entertaining strategy-wise match we've seen between him and the juggernaut uh, of Olivier Bousquet. Yeah, so sure. really fun to watch. Yeah, and great news <coughs> for New York Rounders fans and players because they are top of the table and now putting Tom Marchese into action. Um, you know, I think it would be a big surprise if he didn't get three points here and maybe more. Yeah, look at that win rate. 14 wins over 66 results, uh, over 13 million uh, US dollars in earnings. Best GPI rank of five. He's only been putting up results since uh, since January of 2010. So uh, to get that to cash for that amount amount of money, I mean, what's that average over six years? Like two million a yeah. year? And it's pretty absurd. And this is not someone <coughs> that plays every high roller. He doesn't really travel the ET, EPT circuit uh, religiously. Someone that I believe is playing a lot of high stakes cash games within Las Vegas. So you know, who knows what his earnings are overall absolutely phenomenal performer and someone we're really privileged uh, to have on 
as a member of the global poker. Yeah, and you look at that 13 million, and this is not a guy who's had you know um, some one drop score for you know eight million or some uh, you know World Series main event win for ten. This is a guy who really his average score is always in the six figures based off what he plays and always finishing high. So uh, such a treat to watch what he does and an excellent sl selection for the Rounders and really a huge reason why uh, they are so far ahead in the America's Division, kind of pulling away right now. So this first match is going to be really really interesting as they talked about in the lounge with Sam. Paolo with 49 points, the Rounders with 56. There's a seven-point swing between them there, but you can have a really yeah. big swing in these types Sao of matches. Sao Paulo was struggling in the early part of the season, uh, but you know now gaining momentum. Felipe Ro Mojave Ramos posting awesome results. Tiago Nishijima perhaps coming into form. This is someone that lost the first four heads-up matches they played and then won two games in a row against top-class opposition in Jonathan Jaffe. Um, so the Sao, Lo pa uh, Sao Paulo Mets general manager, um, Andre Akari, obviously has faith in Tiago. Didn't pull him uh, after those early uh, troubles he had. Um, so let's hope he can add to uh, his points tally today. Yeah, and this is a guy, um, you know, obviously uh, huge online pedigree, as Eric was talking about uh, earlier. Someone that, you know, you and I have a lot of experience playing against. Uh, really can represent that sort of Brazilian flavor, that vamos that uh, we love to see online. Only $1.8 million, which is still a ton in the live circuit. Uh, sure. But when you compare it to the likes of Tom Marchese and what he's been able to accomplish, I mean, it's it's just... Tom is such a special player. Sure. I mean, uh, uh, Tiago, as we know from our experience in uh, MTTs, is someone you know that posts results weekly on the online belt, primarily focused on MTTs as the decano. Um, so that's where you know he's posting uh, the mm -hmm. majority of his results. Is a WSOP uh, bracelet winner, which is no mean feat in a 3K event. Uh, yeah, you know, which is very, of, very difficult to, uh, to get. Uh, Zhao Samao, as we heard, number one on Pocket Fives. Boom. That obviously means years of success. I mean, when, oh, you, yeah, go, yeah. when you go number one... When you go number one, see, the way that the, work, <laughs> the rankings work on Pocket Fives is that once you get to number one on Pocket Fives, Legend. you are single-handedly the best online tournament poker player in the world, like, for sure. And I know a few people myself like <laughs> who've done it. Chris Moorman, for instance, uh, flush entity <laughs> of fame in 2012. <laughs> so, it really, it's just a reflection of incredible, <laughs> incredible poker talent talent pedigree even yeah and it's uh it's uh you know good for him but seriously though uh tom marchese this is something really interesting is that i don't think he's the kind of guy that would necessarily do the research in the sense of putting the time in f uh to, to watch the Nishi nishihima matches i mean this is a guy that that you know it stays busy like we said, third in a 25K just this past weekend. Uh, showed a little frustration on Twitter after explaining that it was a pretty emotional experience and that, you know, with no money on the line. Uh, so it, it's it's going to be interesting to see, you know, I'm sure Nishihima has watched and studied the matches that Tom's played and how, you know, that information compared to Tom not having that information is going to affect the dynamic of the heads up match. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know whether Tom uh, does do that kind of research, but certainly he's someone that's going to very much trust his poker style. Yeah. O after all, he's posted so many results results over, you know, last, like you say, the last five years. Um, Tom Marchese, an exceptionally strong poker player. I don't think he make, needs to make too many adaptations uh, to opponents. There's more going to be opponents trying to bring themselves up to his uh, level. You know, real big opportunity for both these uh, franchises. Tiago seems a real cool customer, um, very relaxed, always looking uh, rather swag, uh, you know, in uh, whatever um, circumstance we find, find him played that first match on his honeymoon after all uh, which was quite cute um, Tiago you know we shouldn't underestimate a girl's dream you know, you know very, you know, Jonathan Jaffe, one of the top heads-up players we have in the GPL, GPL, beat him two games to one. So, you know, we can't count Thiago out, but I think Tom Marchese is a slight favorite heading yeah, into this Yeah, certainly match. the favorite. Um, Eric and Laura, uh, they want you guys, so there you go. We do, we always want you. Uh, right, get any comments, any chats into us in the chat box on Twitch and also don't forget via Twitter as well. You can follow us at GPL and also use the hashtag GPL as well. Uh, we have some great action coming up for you. Don't forget it. Obviously, uh, the first one is Tom Marchese versus Thiago Nishima, New York Rounders versus Sao Paulo Mets. But the next one is also going to be spectacular. Marc-Andre Ladoucea for the Montreal Nationals, the manager, in fact, of the Nationals, uh, who only has just recently debuted, in fact. He, he hasn't played many matches up until 
now. He, he might be scared to play anymore as well, might he? Yeah, I, I think this was the worst, uh, the worst possible uh, scenario for Marc Andre. Uh, LA did have the, uh, the the home field advantage in this match, so they get to select to second who they would play. Uh, Marc Andre deciding to play all week. He just uh, finished the WPT Montreal at the uh, Canadian Spring Championship, and uh, yeah, things did really not go well on Tuesday. I don't think he's too happy with this matchup tonight, obviously, and it could be a really rough week for the Nationals. And it's never good when the manager doesn't pick up uh, points. It's never a good thing. So yeah, a very, very tough uh, matchup for Lando Sur, who, by the way, is an accomplished online poker mm -hmm. player. But the adversary is going to be tough to beat. I think if Marc Andre can get six points, it would be awesome for that team. And three points might be what he has to look for if uh, Bousquet is on fire the way he's been in the last few weeks. What sort of format is Marc Andre more used to online? A, a full ring or a six max? Or? No, I, I think more of a you know, bigger rings. But that being said, Marc Andre has played so many times, so many years online. I'm sure he's very familiar with any type of format. It's just the opponent himself that's going to be a challenge for him. But if someone can upset Olivier, I think it could be him. We saw uh, Pascal Lefrancois, who many considered an underdog against Bryn Kenny a few weeks ago, and he did not play around yeah, with the Yeah, he Bryn, was pretty good. And he just went below. You know, it was blow for blow. Uh, so I would say maybe it's a little French-Canadian confidence that kicks in when you're playing the top players in this league, and we'll have to see if uh, La Douceur can get that going as well. Is this something you're familiar with, this uh, French-Canadian confidence, Mr. Danny? Uh, not when it comes to playing poker, no. <laughs> maybe, maybe reading stats. Just talking poker, about stats. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> I talk a good game, of course, but uh, yeah, I don't play a good game at all. Ah, oh, well, one day we'll get, I'll that's get right. your heads up. Apparently we have Thiago Nishihima on Skype now. There he is. I'm wondering where he's playing from this week. Thiago, are you ready for your heads up match against Tom Marchese this week? How have you been preparing? Yes, actually I'm very excited about this one because he is a really tough player. Um, I watch the heads up, uh, the heads ups against the Brusque and he did a pretty good job and let's fight. Tiago, you must be uh, getting tired of being matched up against these uh, heads-up legends, Jonathan Jaffe last week and now uh, uh, Tom Marchese. Uh, are you asking for Andre Kari a little break uh, coming up soon? <laughs> yeah, actually, Akari really is really confident about my my skills and the heads-up game, and uh, he he wants me to play, and I'm very happy about it because we have a pretty good team with uh, Byron and Darren, John Simão, Mojave, uh, John, John Bauer, and they are great players and I'm, I'm going to play, so I'm very <laughs> excited about that. How proud are you, of your, are you of your team this week, having come from near the bottom of the standings to now in second place in the Americas awesome. Conference? Yes, I have a pretty uh, it's uh, a lot of re responsibility because uh, if I won like nine points today, it's, it would be a dream and it, we're, gonna be, we're going to the first place. And New York's are the first place, so let's beat him. Talk to us about uh, one of your, uh, your teammates, uh, Felipe Ramos, who's been a big, big star in this league to start the year, as uh, you've been, of course. But talk to us about Felipe. He really is a, a great character on tour, I'm sure. Maybe a few words on your teammate. Yeah, it's, a, it's a great to, to have him in, in our team because uh, he's in a pretty good moment of, of his career. Uh, He's, he didn't he didn't play a lot online he he and uh, he starts to play again uh, he's traveling the road he came to PCA he went to Dublin he went here in Monaco and he's doing a great job so uh, he's helping us a lot and it's 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 a, a great. It's great for yeah, for us to have him on the team. He's a pretty good good player. And finally, how is it going? I'm assuming you're in Monaco there. Uh, I was busted yesterday on day four, on the main event. So I'm really upset uh, about that. Um, I was 
uh, a sh the, the ship leader in on a day three in a, in a moment on day three but um, I'm pretty excited about 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 here uh, actually have more tournaments to play mm -hmm. but I mean I'm really it's really boring when you do the when you are the ship leader and then you you are busting in I think 54th place sure it's not a good moment for me but I'm really confident about uh, today yeah and the GPL that's what you need to be confident about Tiago yeah <laughs> good congrats well we wish you all the best of luck uh, and uh, thank you very much you can uh, manage to do well in this GPL match against uh, Tom Marchese good luck thank you <laughs> thanks Tiago Nishima there for the Sao Paulo Mets. We're going to head straight over to the boys and get on with this first heads up battle. I think Tiago. Uh, <laughs> I'm Griffin Bedger. This is Sam Grafton. This is the fifth uh, week of the Global Poker League. Nishima, not just breaking hearts, breaking <laughs> cards. And uh, he's playing against Tom Cheddar Cheese Marchese. Big match today. Yeah, for sure. And, uh, you know, you and I come from an MTT background, so always, you know, going to have a soft spot for the guys that play online tournaments. And I think it's credit to Tiago for stepping up in the online format. In general, we've seen people putting up their cash game players. Uh, obviously, LA Sunset in the figure of Olivia Busquet, lucky enough to put up, be able to put up someone who specializes in this format. You know, in general, MTT players, you know, short seen thought of in general uh, to not be as technically good as players in other disciplines. So, you know, really impressive that Tiago can come into this arena and compete and, you know, shows Andrei Akari must have an incredible uh, belief in his skills. Yeah, and so much pride with uh, these guys, especially the Brazilian players. He really wants to represent uh, Sao Paulo and his beautiful country of Brazil well. There's the cheese man <laughs> staring into the computer oh, like... Up, Tom. Is start a little early today? It's... 9.50 a.m. in Vegas, where I am, so it's just about as early as I ever wake up. Hopefully I could give everybody another exciting match today. There you go. Well, mate, if, if Tom ever can't make the match, I think we could get, like, oh. Russell Crowe to play him, you know, like, to, to step up and pretend to be Marchese. <laughs> early, we should point out that, you know, 9.50 may not si sound early to some viewers with regular day jobs. Yeah. To a poker player, that is exceptionally early in the morning, uh, let alone a high-stakes cash game player. I didn't even know they had single-digit uh, hours. Seven, eight, You're normally getting in at 9.50 when you're in Vegas, mate. Yeah. <laughs> lads, in case you didn't realize, massive lads. Griffin Benja, huge lad. So Tiago with two pair. Queens and Jacks, aware that it is good enough to value bet on the river. And Marchese looks him up a little light with bottom pair. Marchese eating a bowl of cereal. The glamorous life of Tom Marchese revealed for all to see. Uh, maybe... Maybe our producers can ask him what, yeah, please what type of breakfast Better than that. Cereal. Please tweet at GPL. Uh, we are giving away um, <laughs> a, a, t -sh a New York Rounders t-shirt to the first person that can For guess two. correctly what kind of cereal he is eating. Okay. So please here. include Tom Marchese in, in the tweet. At GPL, yes, include Tom Marchese. Of course. See, I, I don't know. American, American cereals, they're all like, they're gonna, it's going to be something... Really sugary. Oh, I'm, and sweet. I'm banking on them not getting it right because we don't have any shirts yet. <laughs> <laughs> but we will. I mean, I will commit to that. If I have to pay for it, you know, once yeah, the merchandise we'll is ready. We'll, yeah, we'll, I mean, I'm, we'll I'm get a, man a marker of my pen and write yeah. New York Rounders yeah. on a white T-shirt yeah, exactly. and send it to you. Tom Marchese, two releasing two. up Tiago with two pair. Understandable when he rivers a six. Um, two pair that. over two pair. This is obviously something we've come to expect. These great players able to value bet two pair on a four straight board. Recognizing there are parts of Marchese's range he'll be forced to call with, as um, indeed he did with the queen six for an inferior two pair. See that here. Uh, almost come to turn. take this 
incredibly high level poker for granted. Uh, been so spoilt over these opening weeks with the performances of people like Tom Marchese, Olivia Bousquet, Pascal Lafrancois, some of the early superstars. Against his range of corner big blind. And Tiago off to a good start. And again, if you're new to the GPL, uh, probably not used to this kind of betting king, uh, king high for protection being called by worse. Um, but it is uh, coming to be standard. Let's start here in the first. Um, I'm going to bluff here. Yeah. And now Tiago. It's better. I don't think he's going to call me with king high. We'll try and fold out the king high and, and the better queen and high. Sure Game Tiago Red saying getting him to fold King High is exactly what he was hoping he would get him to fold. Marchese, of course, it's a, a ridiculously tough call anyway, but having just woken up in the morning, he's not even going to consider it and he's going to move on to the next hand. Standard call here. Both players checking down their king high. Tiago may consider a bluff to attack. The A side portion of Marchese's range, but now should just go check check. And Marchese's kicker does play. All right, we're on the board. Fair enough. It took a while to win that first pot. Certainly on the board. And two kings for Tom Marchese. Nishihima wisely. King releases. seven also is gonna play pretty bad. Plays certainly very badly against two kings. Especially against a three bet. Oh, I thought he was gonna say especially against kings, just cold calling every hand. Like he's in the zone. Standard call here. Big flop for Nishihima. Top pair and a flush draw. Marchese with the higher club, as you can see. You know, there's not many de detectives that I would send on the mission to, to bring in a guy like Tom Marchese, but I'm really glad that uh, Tiago's in the in the you know in not the office. Not super excited here, for this. on the force. On the force in All the right, precinct. Let's continue. Let's see what happens. On bring the in the cheese. Bring in the kingpin. Yeah, a lot of like one pair hands of queens. Here. Brooklyn like bear club. Marchese firing again with 10-8 high. I don't expect him to bluff this turn. Maybe a good club. Come on, cheddar cheese. Give him a slice of gouda. Marchese does river a pair. Probably debating whether it's good enough to show down. What hands he could value bet here? Sprinkle what hands <laughs> Nishihima yeah. would fold that he would call Sprinkle a little yeah, Parmesan on him, cheese. Come on now, baby. Also feels like it's just so bluffing. I get called off, but whatever. Tom Marchese says whatever and bars out of one hands. nearly 11k. Yeah, at this point, I like beat King X with the King of Clubs. Um, it's obviously really annoying. I feel like Checker is bluffs with it, but I'm like good versus that, you know. Marchese saying it would be frustrating if Tiago turned the hand into a bluff. He knows I'm not folding the maybe the queen. I 
think he's gonna check in Jack. Um, not on the river, of course. Tiago is saying that he thinks Tom Marchese would check back I'm sure King about Jack this one. on the flop, which does narrow down his value range if he doesn't arrive at the river uh, with King Jack in this manner. You think he would check back King Jack with a club on the flop? I don't think so. Seems like you, you can bet that for value, yeah, yeah. with the King clubs. For sure. And Nishiyima <laughs> sure stone. Right, there we go. nine. Good bet. Get on through. And this is the quality of someone like Tom Marchese. Yeah. Um, I mean, how many three-barrel bluffs have we seen from this guy over the course of the last yeah. two matches? You cannot steer one pair to showdown cheaply against this man. He will pressure you all the way. Um, had the awareness to realize the 10 was never good. Yeah. In fact, sort of acts as a blocker to Tiago's river two pairs. Having a 10 removes some queen 10, ace 10 combos. And what do we always yeah, say? Like How do you deal with, uh, with, with, with the big guy? Uh, can't get three shoes that comfortably, but. Take him to show. <coughs> I don't know. It's hard to see that so here. far ahead, nothing. So maybe I'll overthink that. Griffin Benja will be giving five euros to charity for every time Eric Danny uses the phrase big cheese. Uh, and three mm -hmm. euros for no, every time Laura Cornelius that. calls him a big cheese. Uh, and two euros every time I say the word big cheese. So we're expecting a big donation. Uh, such generosity from the man online known as Flush Entity. Putting that hey, shark I, cage money to work. i got to put work. the millions to some <laughs> use, man. Yes. And is this a huh. sort of blocker bet from Nishima? Yeah, it's pretty gross. I think that's this. <coughs> Not sure. I'm not sure. We're not sure what this bluff it, that this bet is. I guess confusing Tom for sure. Targeting King Ten, Ten Nine, but the Applewood smoked Chevra, known yeah. as Tom Marchese, <coughs> should be able to find a call here with Tom. Okay, pay it off because it's my hand's so strong in a spot where it's weak pretty often, but I don't feel very good about winning here. Yeah, Tom Marchese, also a little befuddled by that bet. Guys, please follow us on Twitch, twitch.tv slash GPL. Um, that way we can harass you aggressively whenever we're online, Tuesdays through, thurs through Thursdays, twelve starting around 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, yeah. 6 p.m. Central European. The same amount, so I have to... Do you follow the trolling at hashtag GPL? To bet on the hand. So here, Tiago with four to a straight, Tom Marchese with the nut flush draw, and the turn card is a good one for Tiago. Tom Marchese now with a gut shot to the nuts, but it's Tiago who has the straight, king to nine. Helping out our uh, new viewers there. The king, the king to nine straight. King, queen, jack, ten, nine. That is what we refer to as a straight. As a king to nine straight, actually. Yeah. But if Tom Marchese were to river a heart, he would have a flush. So, Tom Marchese with a uh, tough decision here, whether right, to just well, call just get there. and try and just realize his, and now rivers an ace, obviously no good against Tiago's actual holding. You know what I actually call the king to the nine straight? I call it taking the dog for a walk, K9. Griffin Benja, that's why they pay him the big bucks. No, Joe Stapleton, we will not be needing your services. We have <laughs> Griffin, Flush Entity Benja, and the Taking the Dog for a Walk Straight lyrics. <laughs> no, Jesse May, <laughs> stay right where you are. <laughs> Just stay in the UK. Uh, I think <laughs> missing, uh, need a tank this one. I don't really want to overthink it. I don't think I'm exactly calling the turn overly light on average, so. Tiago. Yeah, it's um, a good bluff anyway. Pretty hard to uh, fly bl find Random low bluff flush draw or an eight. I'm 
after that one. Thiago putting in his first rebat with the Queen 8 suited. A good call, of course. But yeah. I want to mix this. And after Thiago takes down that nice pot with the straight, stack sizes very, very even. As we go into the 501k level. I prefer to check this best. Um, and Thiago improves on the turn to a double gut shot a 9 or a 5 would make him a straight make a late so bad I have open end of course is there a phrase for the jack to 8 straight Ooh. Eric Denis off, off camera is calling it the jacket I think he bets on the turn with any kind of draws, so he's gonna call here, of course. I cannot bluff anymore. And Thiago doesn't bluff with the 8 high. Marchese, obviously, it had one of the hands that would have to consider no, falling. Let's not give him the walk here. No, Tom, don't do it. If you're just joining us yeah, here, we are right creating now, so. a new poker exactly. nomenclature. First walk in the game. Creating names for various straights. Breaking down barriers at the cutting edge of commentary. Uh, so welcome to the GPL. Well, it's Tom? way too weak to call us, so it's not three about it. It's a little risky, but it's okay. Good call here with Queen 9, Queen 10, Queen Jack. Or in a in the early game. I like could usually want a three bet hand that's connected or like a bad suited hand instead of that, but the live pro in me is like, oh I haven't three bet at all, probably just fold. <laughs> Marchese with a little insight into his thought process there. So, um, Thiago with just jack high, but does have a gut shot and a flush draw. Tom Marchese with the not flush draw and actually the best hand. Obviously, the uh, <clears throat> the nine to five straight is called the office. Uh -huh. you know? It just gets better and better here at the GPL in week Obviously five. Obviously, her. I never That's had this down in this spot. I just want to buff it off. So okay. and he are not a draw Somewhat hand. incredibly rough. Eight through jack <coughs> is not even a straight, man. I like the not flush. You're missing a card. Eight, nine, ten, check. Of clubs yeah, is terrible for my bluff, so I'm gonna check this one. Probably just end up losing to a six or something instead. Yeah. Not bad. <clears throat> Tom Marchese now with a distinct chip advantage, sixty thousand chips at six hundred, twelve hundred. This is my brace, bracelet of WSOP hand. <laughs> Ace of hearts. Nine of diamonds. Ah, that's cute. Everyone knows that, Tiago. Come on. That's beautiful. Tiago there referencing uh, the WSOP bracelet he won at last year's World Series in the 3K event. Um, the third Brazilian, I believe, to win a WSOP bracelet and something obviously and rightly he's immensely proud of. Mm. A huge 550k score. Um, do you remember the hand you won the uh, high roller with, Bello? Yeah, Queen Jack off. I don't remember the suits though. I called a 12 big blind shove. He had like King Three or something. Made Broadway. Police him. Yeah. Oh, really yeah. 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 Let's play straight forward and hope you're not getting taken, too taken advantage of. Tiago like really varied his size Nishima in flop. Like 2.3x and up. Incredibly strongly. 501k. Now it's 612. He's 2.5. And Blake Mendez. I don't know if that's like hand dependent or what he's going for. The good news for Tom, 
for Tiago is that Tom has flopped <coughs> the top pair, albeit a weak one. And Tiago is going to have a ton so of draws So far, he hasn't fired three in any spot, so... A bit more, yeah. but... And this, I think, a very strong signifier of the strength of Tiago's hand here. A very dynamic board. It's and picking size. a half pot bet. And Tom not going to be able to fold for that. I'm gonna try to induce here. Induce a shove. Alright. When you got a third top here, on. you can hit off my top there. There you go. A little frustration there from Tom. Feeling good a bit show, cooler like based a on that, that uh, good bet sizing on the river there. Yeah, a um, little or unconventional there from Tiago. Nine or like a Trying to induce eight, a eight, check nine raise. Or something like that. Don't think Tom's gonna alter his ranges according to Thiago's bet size that much. Uh, could be wrong about that though. Uh, the good news for Sao Paulo Mets fans is that Thiago has regained the chip lead with that hand. And here flops strongest. Checks back and lets Tom Marchese turn a gut shot and no. a straight. Okay, turn, just turn the knots. And second knot. I assume he's going to have some sort of showdown value when he checks back. That's a lot, that's a lot better for him than me. Mm. Tom correctly assessing the situation. Not a gut shot. But better. Um. A pair, of course. Tiago, well aware that and the eight is draws or something like that. That often good here. There are two flush draws out there and a whole host of straight draws. Can't really imagine a better river for my hand. Yeah, Tom, pointing out how great that four of spades is for the sh the queen nine here when both flush draws miss. So now, bet three quarters pot and hope I pay in. He's gonna wind up on this river with a whole host of missed draws. My range is pretty bad here, and he knows about that. Um, there are a lot of missed draws. But I had the king of hearts. Tiago pointing out that he blocks one of Tom's misdraws, King X of Hearts. Tom probably would play so this way. There are less combos off. Okay. He does look up Marquesi nice and big pot for the big cheese. Play to look up. Standard call here. Hand history is in the client. It makes it. I probably have best hand here. Um, a lot harder to follow along, and I haven't had the streams up in the background when I've been playing. I expect him to bet mm -hmm. with air here. Part of me would rather just pay attention to the match then. A lot. Be like messing around with something else. I 
is somewhat likely to. Marchese. Most of the aces pre flop on me. So far in with a very weak holding. In general, you'd want some kind of gut shot. You know, if you're going to be firing 7 8, 5 7, 5 3, Queen 10, and the like here, um, you're getting very out of line to also far with the 9 8. And Marchese rivers the best hand. Not sure he's going to know that, though. We did yeah, see. It's kind of like a shitty line to bet twice and give up, but River and 8, I'm just going to do that and hope I'm good versus. Maybe like a queen high hand or some sort of four. Yeah, and wishful it's thinking be, though. Probably think it's showing a king a lot. Gonna be so pleased when he right. sees Tiago's hand. So sick. I knew it. <laughs> Very well read and now rewarded. Uh, the perfect kind of stack to uh, double up against the, the particular hand oh. here. The Admiral Akbar is for Tiago Nishiyima. Against the R deuce D deuce. Let's go, Mercedes. Marchese needs a deuce. Can't really do much here when you have a pair. He has 16 big ones. To claim three points. <laughs> Two outs heading to this river. Doesn't find them. Tiago Nishiima picking up a big hand at it's just the right moment. There. Nishiyama's timing a little off here. Tom Marchese with the Applejack. This isn't exactly exciting, but I'm just never folding a jack with 23 big blinds, heads up. So, let's see what happens. I guess he might fold a fair bit, even though the way he's played so far doesn't seem like it. Okay. <laughs> And lucky for Tiago there, mm -hmm. there are a lot of hands Tom would be folding. Yeah, good game flow uh, spot there taken by Tiago. Just happened to run into the, I mean, the near the top of his range. Yeah, I mean, I think the only thing is is that Tom actually is actually going to limp a lot there, and that that maybe makes his uh, raising range a little bit stronger. Um, but uh, this match very finely ba balanced. Tom Marchese with a slight chip lead, uh, but he's been dealt five high, and Tiago mm. has been dealt. The three right there is probably good on average. I mean, especially I'm mean, going to just show up with so many like, really bad hands I can't do anything with. Like, it's hard to show up anything worse than, I don't know, like middling suited connector, or, like a suited king, something like that. More equity for Tommy. Yeah, Tom Marchese with bottom pair and a flush draw. And Tiago will now start to bet his over pair. Tom does take a read on Tiago's bet sizing, trying to determine what type of range he has, even though I assume this is a pretty automatic call. Really interesting. Um, you know, mm -hmm. that even though... Baron draw. He's bet his draws a lot in these spots. But I think I'm just going to shove and hope I could get him off. If he just has, like, jack nine type hand or something like that. And just don't let him realize his equity if he has a draw himself. Wow. Wasn't expecting this at all. Tom Marchese shoves the 5 3. Oh, oh please. please. Yes. And um, misstep from Marchese. Not even the worst spot with Queens and I have somebody else. Tiago slow playing the Queens. And Tom Marchese taking a very aggressive line with a pair and a draw. Obviously, recognize that against that sizing, uh, the 3 wasn't good. And now finds himself with five big blinds and five high. I don't know here. I have to be like 40%. I have four or five soon. I just call it off and it is what it is. Tom calls it off. Oops. Tiago walking the dog so here. Who is the first one?
Turn some outs. Can't Good find game, them. Tiago Nishihima Pineda, Pineda. with the win and three points. <clears throat> Dare I say it, but Tiago Nishijima, he's hot. That's three straight heads-up matches he's won. He won the last two against Jonathan Jaffe uh, late last week. Wins the first one against Tom, the big cheddar cheese, Marchese. Um, played really well. A lot of really good hand-reading situations. Uh, trapping those queens pre-flop. Uh, seemed to be cold-calling some of um, um, his opponent's hands. So Tiago, obviously playing with a lot of confidence right now. Number one on pocket fives recently, and that will always help your uh, your ego and your confidence. No, it, it, I know, I know. From, from personal experience, I actually no, used to be... No, it's Jao Samal that's number one. Oh, well. Then he's been hanging out with him a lot because he's playing great. Thank you for that, Sam. Um, but you're, no, thank you for correcting me, obviously. Um, great play so <laughs> far from Nishihima. Getting the first three points for Brazil. And, and again, remember, Eric did tell us that Sao Paulo Mets were near the bottom of the division uh, you know, early on in the season, but they've been really storming up now, getting a little closer, closing that gap in the America's Conference. Big first three points for, uh, for them today. Yeah, for sure. I mean... Could be a big swing. Second against first, uh, Thiago, uh, Thiago's points certainly will make a difference to where the league standings are going into the weekend. As you say, very, very strong performance. Pick the right moment to slow play the Queens. Uh, Tom Marchese improving on the term there. I think perhaps, you know, it's very difficult to uh, criticize someone of Marchese's abilities and standing. Oh, you'll uh, find a way. Go but, ahead. Uh, seemed like the floor is yours, a Sam. slightly uh, overly aggressive way to play the 5-3 suited there. I mean, he even said, um, obviously, it's sometimes hard to catch exactly what uh, Marchese is saying, but it seemed to suggest that... Um, uh, Tiago might be bet folding a hand like Jack Nine, which seems very, yeah, I don't very think he ever would bet yeah, fold that hand. Very, so very optimistic to me. Um, yeah. So slightly overplaying the five three. Um, sure, <laughs> as we often see with Tom Marchese, he'll put on the co a pot of coffee and regroup uh, and try and come back. Because let's let's be honest, although he is one of the strongest players in the GPL, you know he did suffer a defeat against Busquet. I'm sure he won't won't want to lose two heads up matches in a row. No, not at all. I mean, we've seen such great things from Tom. We saw a three barrel bluff uh, that was really effective in that uh, first match here. I'm sure we'll see more of that as the matches progress. Uh, but a couple of interesting spots where Tom is kind of surprised by the way that, uh, that Tiago's been playing. So uh, a, lot of, a lot to look forward to in these final two matches. Eric and Laura are going to tell us all about what this means. It means a lot of things. But for one, Sao Paulo doing really well now. First three points of the night to Tiago Nishiima of the Sao Paulo Mets which means, are they in first place yet, Eric? Not yet, not yet. Oh. It could be at the end of the night. One thing to, to, to point out as well, uh, for Tiago, he recently won the Heads Up Championship at the BSOP Sao Paulo, so a lot of the Heads Up experience for him lately, and I think that might be why Andrea Kari is putting him in this situation a lot. He's really impressing me, Laura. I knew that he was a good player. I was there when he won his bracelet this summer. The Brazilians travel so well. It's an expression we use in North American sports about some teams traveling well. The Pittsburgh Steelers in the NFL are everywhere at every stadium. The Brazilians are everywhere at the WSOP. Other than the Daniel Negreanu moment, probably the Phil Helmuth winning his 14th bracelet, that was the moment. It was unreal. And Tiago, uh, when he won that bracelet, it wasn't just him winning. It was the whole country winning. It was really a, a big spectacle inside the Rio, which uh, you know, from time to time does get a little boring as we're there for about two months, right? <laughs> It's never boring. What are you talking about? Oh, it's boring at times. <laughs> if he's impressing you, he's impressing me too, Absolutely. I tell you. Uh, that game was real even. It kept chopping and changing a little, but it was very, very even until Marchese just made that one move, I seem to think. You know, we, you know, we talked yesterday about um, the managers are going to be adjusting as results happen. I think we saw Selena Lynn probably would have wanted to do things differently with Wayne Jang yesterday. I wonder if this match is very early in the morning in the Pacific time zone. In Las Vegas, uh, the sun has just uh, you know, g gotten up. I wonder if it's just a little too early for someone like Marchese that does play, as the, our guys mentioned, that does play the, the cash games in Las Vegas that never yeah. end at 7 p.m. at night, Laura. They usually start around 10 or 11 p.m. So I wonder if that's a little, um, little issue here where you know, yeah. Marchese may need to, to wake up a bit. I think this loss is going to wake him up for sure. I think it might too. If not, he needs a cup of tea. Someone send that boy a cup of tea because I can't do anything in the morning until I've had my morning tea. It's weird because in America we don't do tea in the morning. But hey, that's great. <laughs> maybe some, maybe some, some coffee for, for... You're in Europe now, Eric. Come on. The big and cheese for the big cheese. cheese. Five euro. Or maybe he just needs some cheese. 
Le Grand Fromage, five euro. <laughs> okay. Well, we've seen one game so far of the first matchup with Thiago Nishima of the Sao Paulo Mets and Tom Marchese. For the New York Rounders, it was to go in the favour of Sao Paulo, them gaining their first three points of the evening. But remember, these guys are first and second in the standings. So if the clean sweep here can happen for Sao Paulo Mets, I believe it means they take over as first place. Correct, absolutely. So that's a, that's a lot of points on the line here. Let's see if it can happen. Here is game two. Back to you, boys. Unsurprising to hear that Thiago um, had that success at the BSOP in heads-up format. Yeah, really tough, looks really tough event, that Brazilian Series of Poker <laughs> heads-up event. No, but it Woo! is an indicator that, you know, he's obviously the perfect representative for the San Paulo Mets in this format. Uh, you know, a lot of talent on the Brazilian team. You look at the guys that, um, you know, Andre Akari decided to pass up on in this for format. He could have had Byron Caverman out there. He could have had Darren Elias. He goes with Thiago. He liked what he saw last week against Jonathan Jaffe. He thinks he'll be a good fit for the juggernaut that is Tom Marchese, and so far, so good. Yeah, really uh, great start for Thiago. Um, as we say, as we said, really uh, played well. Picked, I thought, a little bit unusual sizings uh, when he flopped that set, uh, but did get Tom Marchese to pay off with a very, very weak jack against that portion of Marchese's range. It was absolutely the right sizing. Um, so now sets himself up for an opportunity to put Sao Paulo Mets top of the table. And here we go. Wow, that was perfect. Perfect setup yeah. for the match. Jeez, I know. We're getting good at this. We have a new editor back there or something? Right. <laughs> um, we should say, you know, uh, obviously we support the entire poker community. One thing people don't realize about the GPL is uh, a lot of our um, editors and sound guys are ex-poker players. We actually have uh, former November Niner Joe Chung that back there working on the sound. Dwight Pilgrim is putting together uh, the packages. And Max Heinzelman is our producer. Uh, yeah, Max Heinzelman and uh, Steve Gross, uh, the legend g Burra, looking for a new career, uh, also working for our technical team. Uh, great that Alex Dreyfus, you know, reaching out to former WPT champions uh, and putting them to work. Mm -hmm. If you're an ex-poker player, do One write into us. Yeah, Chino, I need a coffee. <laughs> yeah, thank you. It's our intern. Mr. Chino Reem, <laughs> fresh off a huge score. <laughs> Man. Um, yeah, do write into us, ex poker players, if you would like a job uh, taking anyone and everyone. Yeah. Former Pocket nu Fives number ones, former World Series of Poker champions, uh, anywhere. All are welcome on board the GPL Express. Headed straight to Sporty Sportsville. Thomas Marchese with two jacks. We'll call it King Queen High here. Um. Wow. Fortunate misclick that for Tiago. Pretty bad preflop, especially deep. So, it's your storm. Oh, he said he was going to fold. I, I should say, say like, folding a bit more on the reverse end since he's given up with, like, jack high on the one board where giving up seems a little crazy and you give up with, like, the 8-6 on the two flush drop board where those are both, like, about the worst hands you could have and you're going to, like, lose the some really weak hands I have, so you should most likely bluff with them. The brilliant no Eric Denny will be doing a lot of his reporting um, for the last few weeks um, from Toronto over Skype and uh, Jamie Gold there. coming in to replace him <laughs> in the coming weeks. So he's going to be doing a lot of corresponding with old James. He's changing. His bad size. Started as a um, TV producer, didn't he, Jamie Gold? Well, the buddy, we hired him. We, st we still need to have some sort of, you know, Yeah, have to have some sort of background. Yeah. Yeah. Means, I think he... Okay, doesn't doesn't want to force me to play some of them on. It's under call here with King High. But we know if we know one thing about Tiago Nishima, it's that he's sticky with King High. Hashtag references, yeah. hashtag Jonathan Jack, <coughs> hashtag calling it down. Oh. Hashtag losing He's huge have, like middling hands that? like queens yeah. bunch.
sounds more like, oh, yeah, like you're draw. playing on brilliance than res Jack the resilience. Hearts, Jack yeah, but, that, but, what, but if I explain all my jokes, then, you know. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so, yeah, he's been very brilliant. Don't get it twisted. Actually, yeah, it does kind of sound brilliant, more brilliant. <laughs> brilliant. I mean, he's been playing brilliant. If you, if you said someone had played Brazilian, you would think, oh, wow, that's like brilliant in a Brazilian way. You wouldn't think that's Brazilian. Brilliant so far this match. The Brazilian Brazilian uh, <laughs> Tiago Nishima okay. has won three matches a row in a row here in the Global Poker League. And what a uh, you know what an achievement it would be if he could mm -hmm. defeat Tom Marchese and Jonathan Jaffe in back-to-back -back weeks. Really mm -hmm. uh, would you know set down a marker here in the Global Poker League. Uh, you know this one of the great things for these top-level players yeah. uh, getting to test their metal against the best in the business. Hard not to, to root for the Brazilian team too. I mean, I don't know about you, but I've been to Brazil myself and I've met a lot of Brazilian players and Hashtag a lot of people. Brags. Hashtag brags, many dinners, and uh, <laughs> they're a very loving um, and uh, smiling mm. and super good looking group of people. Sounds Brazilians. about as bad of a hand as in the uh, shop with here, the, so. the way that they use the internet language, it. the vamos and the jazz. No, I have um, uh, you know, flip flops with the I'm going to be tempting here and Tom when he calls me with the king high. queen high, king ten, um, two clubs. Tiago does release the best hand. Nice pick up from Tom Marchese. How many Brazilian players do you have on your Skype? Any? Um, no, Griffin Benjamin. Uh, Nathaniel no. Farber. Uh huh. Um, jeez. Tom Marchese that might be flopping it. an up and down straight draw, but actually in pretty bad straight with mm. a, a pretty bad uh, situation. I was going to say Raza, but he's here. Portuguese. Um, but it's not, not Raza. Falling, like what, super. Naza, you mean? Naza, yeah. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag big times. Hashtag, how many of those Azza names out there, by the way? Raza, Naza, Baza. I have There's some a lot of Azzas. And Tom Marchese Blockers. will have to decide whether to fire again. This turn. Um, and if we know anything about Tom. Committed, uh, betting three times. And it's like, yeah, he's going to have a decent amount of sevens. But he's going to have like a fair amount of like fives or fours. Or it's like open under straight draws. Or like overs on gut shot, like jack eight hands, queen eight, etc. Marchese. So, I have a hand as bad as what I have in terms of like, showdown value. Great, all, he's just gonna great strategic insight there times. from Tom Marchese, saying he is going to unload the clip on Tom on Tiago here, but that yeah, yeah. river somewhat reasonable showdown value gives Tiago a straight, and Marchese so, two pair. So check and hope he has five four. Five six four six etc. Does check and the pot goes to Tiago. Well, all things considered, a pretty good run out because I don't think he's folding that one at any point. Tom, pointing out there are different ways to run good. Uh, although he did lose the hand, didn't fire that third bullet, uh, estimating that perhaps it wouldn't have worked it's against Tiago's actual hand. Once again, though, it is Nishihima who is off to a strong start. I think he's going to call it those three or something like that. I'm opening now. And um, maybe had two overs. Ace high. Nishihima uh, explaining how many hands Tom is likely to fold on this turn to another barrel. Obviously, as you can see, Tiago improves where a four or an eight will make him a straight. High, of course, but and Tom releases a pair and a straight draw. Quite a snug fold there from Thomas Marchese. Yep. Sure, the man knows what he's doing. You know, we should remind this, people um, Queen Deuce. just how great these poker players are. Um, you know, someone like Tiago can just seem like one. an ordinary poker player, but once he know, throws on that scarf and beret, one point eight million you know he means in live business. earnings and X number of million earnings online, 
Um, you know, real top class performer. And Tom Marchese, undoubtedly best, one of the best poker players in the world. Thirteen million dollars in tournament earnings. And Trace Chuck Norris, right, guys? Right. Looks pretty cool as well, isn't it, Tiago? Yeah, I love the scarf uh, hat combo right now. Loving it. I just, want him, I just want him to buy me a coffee. Never call me again. <laughs> Mate, next time you go to Brazil, next time you're in the neighborhood, yeah, give, I him will, a, give I will him a I'll ring. Give him a ring. Yeah. Me, on his, me and Griffin on his, Benger. On his, on his finger, because he's so damn good looking. Uh, me and Griffin Benger, not being paid too much here at the Global Poker League, but we are eager to have many, many dinners with the top poker talent. And put a ring <laughs> on it if we have to. That has been drafted here. Uh, that's how we're going to compensate ourselves. Wow. I'm talking about you, Tom Marchese. I expect a brunch next time I'm in Las Vegas. Um, I equity here, like and I don't think he... It's gonna fold any hand that he called, like ace ten or nine, maybe nine ten. But he has like nine ten of hearts. He has a huge draw now, so kind of interesting that Tiago wouldn't fire there. Uh, I think if the hands were reversed, you would see Marchese putting in a bet on the turn with the yeah, jack ten. Yeah, going to check. Despite the number of draws. I think if I had like a king where my kicker plays, I'd probably consider just value betting, but as is, I think it's somewhat reasonable to make this one of the better hands. Yeah, try check -high. instantly checks back the jack high. Doesn't consider betting the river. Uh, perhaps a little bit of a leak. I'm not certain that it is a bet, but should have at least thought about it with a hand. It's very hard to show down and win with. Pretty action-packed flop here. Gutter, two overs from Marchese, six high, straight flush draw. Queen high with the queen high flush draw for Tiago Nishima. And he is going to bet exactly half of the pot. Sort of an unusual lead, but... On the lead. When I leave here, he two. knows. In general, go. whenever no, we mind. see people adopt this le leading strategy, it's never strong. Die on my hand, I feel like no. it's just always a stab. Well, it's a little bit unfortunate that Marchese happened to have a diamond and a straight draw. Yeah. And there are hands that he couldn't continue with to that lead. Um, but you do end up strengthening Tom's range. Um, and now, if Mar when Marchese chooses to bet, uh, he doesn't choose to bet. He probably, he probably has like ace high or king high up with the king on the end, so. He might just have like. Random king high with the king of diamonds, or queen high with the king of diamonds. Three check calls, and they don't know what to do on the river. It's pretty bad. Well read here by Thomas no, Marchese. But can he pull He's the trigger? He's to try to get him off slightly better hands he might have. Yeah. Tom Marchese does fire. Real strong sense of where he's at. But those hands don't bet. And chip stacks pretty even. Tiago defending the ace three and flopping best. Tom Marchese gets third pair. Top kicker, so elects the check pack. Just keep the pot small. Probably best the queen here. And slightly deceptive from Tiago, checking the ace twice, uh, mixing things up. That's just like giving a free card to some hands that have outs. And based off of how he's played, yeah, this not really bluffing. I guess I could just like check back and fold or her bet, but actually getting Marchese to bet with the worst high. hand. That's what I thought.
check behind his hand. But yeah, you just see that so much. I see that he's small. Just that check raise in his hand kind of sucks. You have a spade. It's pretty nice, but. So Marchese goes on the attack. Tiago, interestingly enough, did say he was considering checking behind. And this is a nightmare scenario when you bet a medium Could strength hand. Here, especially if my if I had like ace of spades. Um I don't think four three. Is in his range, maybe to pair. Tiago does fold. And you haven't seen that much of this in the heads up format, but that's how a good player punishes someone that over C bets, uh, that puts in too many continuation bets with too weak a range. Marchese attacking with the queen high and forcing Tiago mm -hmm. off the best hand. Really like that play from the man we call the big cheese. Thomas Marchese. The biggest of cheeses. Cheddar Bob, if you will. Cheddar Tom? Cheddar Tom. I play with like a good bad check that, but. I don't really like the idea of just barreling the turn here with no equity when I'm going to have so many straight draws that I feel obligated about the turn with. Tom Marchese giving us a little bit of strategy there, uh, explaining why he doesn't fire again with this weak hand. Because there are so many 10 eights, jack eights, five sixes he wants to bluff. Um, these top players so aware of controlling bluffing okay. frequencies. Could have like somewhat credibly repped a nine and I could still somewhat credibly rep a nine, so just bet. Employing the old bet check bet line, one that traditionally is thought of as a very credible value line. Please back me to here to call. Take him to showdown. He had the queen. Maybe seven, eight. Tiago, pretty low in his range with just the ace high, and Marchese gets it done. Always finding different ways to bluff, and that's one of the reasons, one of the things that makes him so fun, Sam. For sure, Tom Marchese, uh, real high-level poker. Loves a good bluff as well. We approve of that, don't we? We, lo yeah, we love yeah. a good bluff at the GPL. For those of you unsure, we were bluffing when we were talking about uh, oh, the likes quick. of Jamie Listen. Gold and Chino Reem and... No, but Joe, that is actually Joe Chung. Oh, is uh, it? Yeah, Joey. Joey Chung. Yeah, jo you know the guy we call Joey? He looks obviously a bit different. He's aged slightly. His hair's a lot grayer. JC, Joey yeah. Chung. Yeah. Oh, dope. For those of you who wondered why Joe Chung so isn't on the high ro roller circuit, he is our sound guy. Uh, we, we love him. Oh, but main event uh, third place finisher. Yeah, for sure. If he'd been a that's why you've got to respect ICM. Otherwise, you end up right. as part of the production team. Yeah, yeah absolutely. High, I remember back then. Bluffs, I was, so. <laughs> hasn't I been too bad. I, I was so the one so who said he should have. feel comfortable at least uh, calling one and Hamilton seeing where it goes. Yeah, now you're just checking. I hope you're good. Chances are the times you beat are usually when you like turn to river to queen or seven. And Tiago, we saw Marchese oh. take the bet check bet line there uh, with a weak hand in his range. Tiago doesn't even consider it. Checks back the jack nine, and another pot for Thomas Marchese. It's gonna min raise. I mean, it's. Kind of like obvious and bad. It's like, oh. But I'm like him to not fold pre flop. And Tiago, uh, we saw this with the ace um, jack, picking the wrong time to three bet. It's kind of shown 
that he is capable of like three bet fold in these spots. I mean, I don't really think he is here, but I'm still just gonna like call him position with like two times the pot behind. I think you still get it on like most boards. So. There he goes. So I'm calling. He's in a round. Nice Thomas Marchese. This is why he is one of the best. Well, well I hate the no, board. Really so. nice bases. Yeah, I could check raise here. Thinking this might but be a good spot for him. To check behind a lot. A little does so he know. I think I'm probably going to back call. Just 14% equity. Can't know the strength of Marchese's hand in this spot. Marchese ordered a Royale with cheese. Got the aces. When, when he bets this small, I think you're better off just like calling because there's some chance he has a hand that's just like dead and bet folding the flop. And there aren't really any bad turn cards. And Tiago should begin to get worried here, I think. I don't know whether he can get away from this with so little behind. Just like such a lockdown hand on this board. But Marchese's to range get to get I think this far. Almost like always check folding. The wheels are spinning that he's not willing to leave the 28,000 out there or give a free card and the clicking would indicate. Big moment here really for Tiago. Um, if he gets it in here, gonna have oh. just, you can see 5% equity. He does shove Tom Marchese, two aces. Played to perfection and rivers are flush. And like a fade, fading photograph in Back to the Future, to the flop too, so. yeah. Tiago Nishijima has been eliminated from the second match. Three points for the New York Rounders. There's Cheddar Cheese doing his thing, getting all good up and yeah. Tom Marchese takes three points from Tiago Nishijima. <laughs> What was that face? <laughs> it's now 3-3 going into the third and final match of this uh, matchup between the Mets and the Rounders. Big three points, though, for the Rounders, creating a little more separation, kind of evening things out um, in that America's Conference in regards to the first and second teams. Um, what would you think of uh, the last hand there between Tom and, and Nishishima? Yeah, Tom Marchese articulating the reasons uh, for slow playing the aces. And I think, you know, we can all agree, uh, great decision, particularly against the specific hand Tiago had, 7-9 off, really, really in bad shape against uh, the aces pre-flop and on the flop. Um, you know, one of the things that the GPL is aiming to do is create new fans of poker, introducing people to the game. Yeah. But for those uh, who have watched a lot of poker, I think you'll agree we're seeing a masterclass from Tom Marchese. It's so great as a poker enthusiast yeah. and a poker fan uh, to watch and learn from someone who plays the game with such a high skill level. Uh, uh, really, really uh, thrilling. Tiago competing as well. Uh, you know, two gr sh really strong poker minds, but Marchese, uh, just a joy to behold, really. Yeah, so fun to watch too, because, you know, the, the wheels spin on hitting his head in that spot where you think, okay, he's gonna four bet, he's thinking about a four bet, and then he says, you know what? I'm still going to get this money in on a lot of boards. Let's just make sure I get him. And that's a really important thing there. It's, it's, a, it's a subtlety between uh, what a lot of the top, even the top pros would do, which is, you know, wow, this is the first time he's really three bet. Um, you know, the few times he has, I think it's just been for value. He probably has it here. And then a lot of pros will think like, okay, I want to make sure that, you know, he doesn't get a board that he's going to miss or something like that. No, he just says, you know what, I'm going to make sure just in case. Tiago thought he flopped a bit too much equity with that mid pair, you know, saw his wheel spinning and ended up being the hand that, that destroyed him and got three points for the rounders and no three points for San Paulo. And that, that's what those are the subtle differences that make yeah. someone like Tom so good. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely great play. Um, you know, we talked about uh, the way he composes his bluffs early on in the first match. We saw him far three bullets against Tiago and take him off top pair. Then in the second match, we saw that much more subtle play with the Jack-5 suited, betting the flop, 
checking back the river, uh, checking back the turn. A lot of people afraid to go bet, check back. Fard on the river, and again, took Tiago off one of the weaker hands in his range, admittedly, an ace high. Uh, you know, Tom Marchese, uh, a top, top competitor, you know, had a setback against Busquet, um, losing that match uh, two games to one, but now poised, I really think, uh, to uh, secure six points for his franchise. Yeah, and such an interesting team the Rounders really are. You look at the guys like Jason Wheeler had some success in that first week. Then you look at Bryn Kenny just bluffing so much. Now Tom finding so many different ways to bluff. You mentioned the three here. He was check-raising a lot of flops against Olivier Busquet. So interesting, so fun to watch. Check-raising along the rivers. Tom's a great uh, entertainer. Let's go to the lounge, though, so we can talk to Eric and Laura. Thanks, guys. Congratulations there to Tom Marchese and the New York Rounders picking up the next three points of the very first match of the evening. He deserved those three points, didn't he? Yeah, life is good when you're as good as Tom Marchese and you get those aces and you slow play them. How many times have you and I done that and it's cost us a match? <laughs> For him, he wins. So great job by Marchese, who played it excellent in this match. Yeah, we saw some really high play there. It was interesting to watch. Yeah, no, I think the same thing can be said for Nishihima. He just tried something, didn't work out. 1-1, one, one. we'll have to see what happens in that third match. Yeah, what do you think? What do you think is going to happen? Who's going to take the next three points down? Well, I, unfortunately for the Sao Paulo fans, I really think that uh, Tom now is fully awake, ready to go, probably had that cup of java or cup of joe, maybe a little cup of tea, and he's going to be very, very difficult to beat in this third match. Was it the tea or the cheese? What do you think, people? Let us know. It's the big cheese. Five euro. <laughs> uh, don't forget we've got some great matches coming up for you tonight as well this is the first one of the evening there are still two more coming your way and the second match of the evening is Marc-Andre Ladoucet the manager of the Montreal Nationals and he will be facing off against the top scorer of the GPL Olivier Bousquet for the LA Sunset we keep saying it but Maria Ho does not seem to be putting any other players up for heads up why would you? Is, is the, it's a, no, it's true. Why would you put anyone else in heads up at the moment? Uh, Bousquet is on fire and you need to ride that wave. I'm actually a little surprised we didn't see Pascal Lefrancois in Montreal's lineup this week as well. Things have been going so well for him. Ride that wave because when that wave stops, then you're in real trouble if uh, no one else is picking up points. Don't forget as well, we have another match, the last and final match of the evening. This evening, uh, a, a late substitution. Jonathan Little will now be playing for Jay Cody of the Las Vegas Moneymakers. He will be facing off against Kitty Quo of the San Francisco Rush. Everyone very excited to see her play because she won uh, a match already uh, for GPL. We haven't seen that much of her yet, though. That's right. We get to see her again tonight. Before we head out to the yes. desk, uh, some uh, Brazilian feathers were ruffled. Oh, yes. A little comment on the Brazilian series of poker by one of our uh, one of our people here. Now, what Sam did mention is true. Only 19-person 19 19 tournament that heads up. However, Nishihima did defeat Felipe Ramos heads up for the title. And uh, Zhao Bauer, fourth place, is actually the guy who eliminated uh, who was eliminated in the semi-final round, but only 19 players, so Sam is right about that, a small tournament. Are there just the GPL poker players that play for Sao Paulo? Are they the only Brazilian poker players? Well, let's be honest, there's two, 3,000 players playing in most of those tournaments in Brazil, so wouldn't be shocked that, uh, to see all of the members of the, the Mets on, the, on those lineups as well. Well, talking of the Mets, they want to win this. It's equal at the moment. It's one all. So let's go to the third and final game of this first match of the evening. Back to the boys and back to the game. Uh, I'm Griffin Benjamin. This is Sam Grafton. Um, I, I actually, I need to, to be right back. I'm going to go get a shovel. I just need to scrape you off the floor <laughs> where, uh, where Eric yeah. left you run over by that, that bus, that Brazilian bus, yeah. screaming vamos, bisop, bisop vamos, ja, 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 ja. I wasn't aware how prestigious the Brazilian series We're talking of Felipe is Ramos, I'm sure, buddy. I mean, Felipe the Mojave Ramos. Yeah, the uh, Mojave. Yeah. I mean, I'm pretty sure uh, the standard of play in Brazil is incredibly high. Um, we shall see. Yeah, no, uh, yeah, hey, hey uh, I mean, a lot of GPL members. Uh, pretty cool four. that we know that Andre Akari just went, okay, I'll just take one, two, and three from the Brazil series of poker. Yeah, I mean, that's what that's what makes that yeah, we series saw how great so special. We saw how great jo uh, JB, Jao Bauer, we saw how great he played. Yeah, yeah, uh, So let's talk about uh, this match uh, for a moment. Um, you know, delicately poised, both players wanting bragging rights and, uh, you know, uh, that come with winning two games to one. Uh, both players battling out for their franchises at the top of the table. Still a lot to play for here. 
Yeah, uh, definitely. Um, you know, we talked about the, them being one and two in the standings. Um, obviously, the rounders having some separation because Tyler Kenny doesn't know how to finish worse than like third in any tournament he ever yeah. plays. Um, so, uh, you know, obviously, San Paulo really wants to represent. I mean, re they're representing a whole country here. You look at the Americas division, um, and it's, uh, you know, primarily teams from the U.S. of A. Yeah. Sao Paulo has an opportunity to represent South America. It's not just about Sao Paulo. It's not just about Brazil. It's not just about Joe Bauer or Joe Samo or Byron Caverman or Darren Elias. It's about an entire continent, bro. Yeah, lot resting on the sh shoulders of Tiago here with a whole continent cheering him on. And some fantastic headwear. All right, here we go. Third match. Nice go, Tom. This is the ninth heads up match I've played at this point. I'm four and four, so it'd be nice to get a win here, especially against the team that's in second. Yeah, Tom doing our job for us. Uh, pointing out that they will extend their lead to 10 points over the Sao Paulo Mets if uh, Tom can pick up a win here. So big swing if uh, Thiago wins, cuts it down to just four points. Sao Paulo Mets with only two wins so far, as opposed to five wins for the New York Rounders. But the reason they're in contention is the outstanding form of Felipe Mojave Ramos, who has finished second, I believe, twice in the six max events, or maybe even three times. Certainly not, a, not the stats guy. Uh, certainly had a lot of late finishes. Here, a situation uh, pretty uncommon in heads up. Top pair over top pair. Marchese's kick out worse. And Tiago and Tom improving. Tiago turning two player, two pair. Good turn for me. Tom Marchese, as he says, I'm delighted with the turn. Uh, picking up a straight draw. Can bet the ace. Um, I expect him to bet the ace on the turn. So let's check here. And we'll probably check raise. Great spot for Tiago. Raise over here. Targeting exactly the kind of hand that Marchese has. Such a good chance you've seen. That's uh, I help my chances of getting called here. Tom Marchese betting for value on the river and fantastic spot for Tiago Nishiyama. Decided to check the river here with two pair. Uh, Tom is going to feel like he's very capped, like he never has nut hands in the spot. And real opportunity for the Sao Paulo Metropolitan to accumulate some chips. Tiago just working out what size he wants to go. What size he'd make it with um, a hand like 5-4 or 5-8 that he might want to turn into a bluff. And yeah, I mean, now on my kind of thinking I was in the tank. Like, on the kind of downsides of spot like this is he hasn't really played any spots aggressively so if he decides to just like go for a good bluff here he's probably gonna make a decent amount on average because I mean I have somewhat reasonable hand to call him with and I'm not really considering calling him at all wow Tom right. Marchese on with a, next a straight blocker just finds the fold um, thought he might consider it for longer um, but it seems he's taken a read yeah, on Tiago's tendencies, suggesting he hasn't played too many spots aggressively, five, particularly six, any seven. river spots. It's turning into bluff, but I, mean, I haven't really seen any like triple barrels out of him or like river bluffs. So. Granted, I haven't been like following the actions. So we're talking like hands that showed down. I've seen him check so him Bet B. But it's 
kind of. He's been big sizing here, Tiago. Continuation banging like half pot the whole match, and then just like randomly through quarters pots. I like King Seven too with the flush draw. I mean, great I'm turn hard card here for Tom to get Tiago to keep when bluffing when facing that. this board. I mean, it's literally his biggest seed bet of the match, and it's on one of the drier possible flops. Marchese yeah. picking, up, picking up on a slightly random element to Tiago's game. Turn. Maybe and that sizing, just a bit of frustration sure okay. not getting called. I don't know. Um, he does fold the king three. Uh, Tiago off to a great start, but I think a really impressive fold from Tom Marchese. You know, particularly when he breaks down his explanation, you know, someone that... Obviously, he has a strong theoretical background, but it's very attuned to players' tendencies. Yeah. Man, yeah, that's two paths this match where I'm definitely, like, somewhat worried that he could have owned me. Hopefully, uh, that hasn't been the case. You know, you'd imagine that someone playing high-stakes cash games I mean, yeah, obviously in Vegas, is, that's a big part of how he makes his money. Plus, like aggressive players, adjusting most of those players uh, to amateurs surprising. who either over-bluff or under-bluff in certain spots. Um, really, really interesting stuff. We should say, though, of course, it's Tiago here who is on the front foot in terms of chips. See, like and really increasing right the sizing right of his, uh, his continuation like betting. Not somewhere used to seeing from Tiago. Uh, well, Adjusting his strategy, perhaps. Yeah, but, and also pick two's very low equity hands yeah. to do it with. Um, the 6-9 did actually turn the best card it could turn, other than the pair. Um, but, you know, uh, random... Do you want to explain to the, to the, the kids at home why, what uh, what about that? Why, why you say it's such an impressive King role? 10, King Jack. Oh, I meant the uh, 8. I don't think he's going to fold. I think I'm going to have a weak hand on average. But Certainly not the... And a heart, which blocks some of his draws, so... He's going to fold. Hopefully I haven't gotten bluffed too much so far. He's got 5-6, he can bluff there. 5-7, hearts, jack-10, king-jack, jack-8, 10-6, just... Okay, I'm getting bluffed a lot so far on the second one. Tiago upping the aggression. That's certainly the case. Yeah, I mean, we're talking about adjusting. Like, to, to, to get to number one in the world on pocket fives, and this is not a bit I'm doing. I mean, like, really, like, you have to be in tune with what makes, um, you know, a successful online tournament player at the time. And right now, you know, I think it's Tiago's very, very good at adjusting and very uh, You're joking, yeah, game you know he, he didn't let like, the number one. Yeah, of course, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Griffin, hard to tell. When Griffin's being That's serious, <laughs> and oftentimes it's one of the Brazilian are going to be good. So, That's a good turn is though. I don't know if I'm fully buying it. So, let's not call. I can turn a jack, club, and eight. Has like cards that I'm Does seem like happy continuing on to the river. Tiago so. I think when you're getting this price, at like 3 to 1 on the flop, it makes like some sense to just peel and see what happens. Get a fairly good brick. Any of the cards that would improve his hands. I mean, it's not that many. Well, any jacks or all club. That's. I'm just going to bet as a bluff. Um, if he does end up check raising it, I have to fold. It's not really the end of the world since I have such bad equity versus the strong hands here. And I mean, when you just have a hand as weak as like it's 10 not high. the best card for me. Fold out once I play the other hands Don't think on the turn. Probably. That like might hero call me on the river. I think that's like a much better situation for me. So I'm just going to bet 8,800, which like sets up a river shove. 
and I mean, if you check races, he owns me pretty good, but I think more often than not, you just end up like folding some sort of like weakish hand that you check raise the flop with. And Tiago does there fold we go. the best hand on the turn. Tom Marchese quickly adjusting to Tiago's new strategy. Uh, really interested to see the shifting dynamic of this third match. Um, I think it's quite cool, actually, from Tiago yeah, to mix it up. Like you know, once you start match, get to get that information like about your with opponent, after match one. Matches, they, they're, Which, they're I mean, it makes me like, like my folds a little bit less. I guess here's like another example for like the spot where he's like sizing super small compared to how he has in like previous hands. So, and this is a big, big turn card. A lot of draws over here. I prefer to check behind and realize my equity. He just has nothing so often, but I'm gonna check. I mean, I just don't really think it's necessary to bet a hand that's as strong on the river. And he checks here. I think there's two. Um, I cannot put him on ace. I think maybe he bets a jack. I check behind him. Wow, nice answer. I guess I had three river, river cards that I like, really got him on. Kind of unfortunate that I've seen that. That's like the second time where he's had an open ender on like a two flush draw board. And it seems like his standard in that spot is kind of just to like take the free card. Well, a lot of people would consider betting. I think he's done well with those checks so far because I've had some really strong hands in spots where he has checks. So. Back now. So. Definitely not. It's not the best card for me. It's really hard to follow through. So with a hand like as weak as this, I'm probably just better off like checking in the river and maybe trying to like stab there. If I could somewhat reasonably rep like a bad king or a 10, like checking in the river and like half potting instead now. I have like a complete shit hand, but I kind of feel obligated to bluff with it just cause it's so weak. And I mean, he could have like a 10 or a king that are like pretty tough calls. I think he bets many queens on the turn himself. Because I don't know if it's good to try to bluff the queen. I don't know if he, he can fold the queen over here, especially in the way I played. Tiago makes a good tough call. With the hero call on the river. There he is. Nice hand from Tiago Nishihima. Big pot and switching the balance of this match very, very much in the favor of uh, the Brazilian and Sao Paulo Metropolitan representative, Tiago Nishihima. Uh, big, big call and a big, big moment there. Uh, now having Marchese out chipped two to one that's a number one in the rankings kind of confidence call there um, yeah <laughs> pocket fives number one tiago so nishihima made a good fold there which is nice Amazing achievement to defeat Jonathan Jaffe, Ishtari, like 
and then Tom Marchese, King of Cards, back to back heads up confrontations. Uh, you know, what uh, amazing feat. How important that it is be. just to be like running reasonably if you're trying to. Uh... I'm gonna check this one. I'm just going to bluff. Checks back here on Queen 4 4. It's real dry flop, and he's been C betting a lot, so. I'd like immediately be somewhat worried that he just has a queen. Because I mean, when he half paths, I'd wait him kind of like away from a queen. Because I think he might just consider checking it back again. So he's more likely to just be betting like an ace high hand or like a pair worse than a queen for protection. But we'll let him take it. Here, 34 big ones. I'm just gonna three back call. I don't think I necessarily do that amazing versus his range when I get all in, but a mix of just like picking up the pot, and I think I still have like some sort of equity edge when we get it in, makes it pretty easy, just like three back call. These are the stacks where, um, when he was a shorter stack, he had like the equivalent of about 30 big ones and he just tried to three bet bluff me with nine seven. And darn, he did, he bluffed me with the six nine, uh, king seven two. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's kind of like the value of just changing your sizing. Like, I mean, chances are you just also picked up fortunate turn card that he's gonna barrel because I don't really know if he's doing anything on a card that isn't like an eight but hey I mean it's sometimes just like more credible when like out of nowhere you just like size bigger in a spot where you've been sizing smaller and in that particular spot like he got me to fold a hand that not only is like a big hand but a hand that like blocks none of his draws Meanwhile here, um, he's got me two to one, which obviously could flip flop in one pot, so it'd be nice to just pick up some cards. I think like these hands are relatively close with 28 big blinds. Uh, I'm just gonna shove I don't, I think shoving still makes a decent amount and I'm just not that excited to like play pot to opposition with hands like this if I don't expect them to be like bluffing that much. Charleston, a little bit over, probably up there. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, he, looks like he's Bluffed me a few times this match. Yes, yes. Just looking through, seeing that he buffed me with like 10 Tip of the bed well. head there from Tom Marchese. Yeah, I haven't really followed along that closely throughout, so it's possible. It's a loose call. Before this match, he had done a lot of bluffing as well, but he does. I mean, That's kind of just the value of establishing like a tight image. Like I've given him credit in this match in almost like every spot because I don't think he's done all that much. All right, with queen 10 here, I'm just gonna peel. Hope the flop top pair, which I did. Not that small. Can do something here. He's gonna 
called me king high, or case high, maybe queen high. Kind of a tough turn card. I think it's not a good card for me, but I can bet to be called with by the ace high or queen high. Versus is the size, and it's not a call. Let's see what happens. Well. Oh boy. It's the diamonds on the river. I hope I had a 10 now. Because. Um, it's kind of nice. unusual bet by him on the turn there, but. I guess you just like betting for protection, and when you're playing aggressively, you might think that it's a bit more worthwhile to just like barrel in hopes that I have a float that turns equity, or an ace high hand that's just looking to call again. I think when he bets big like this, Interesting float against the big bet here from Tiago. Uh, Tom betting 2,400 into about 3,500 with that top pair. Tiago, knowing he can turn a lot of good equity, do you think you would float to this size, Sammy? Well, I think he's overreading into Tom's sizing. On low boards, uh, in general, people pick a bigger sizing because you need more protection against over cards. Uh, that's, you know, an ace high board, king high board, much more stable. You pick a lower bet sizing with range. Seems a highly ambitious float. Especially as you're calling with your ace high, king highs, eight, nine, really nine, nine, five, all your gut shots. Bet the river with the tracks just because. Yeah, Tiago kind of trapping himself into a. I don't know how many like aces. Bluff here. Like ace high hands he calls the flop with. Yeah. Yeah, exactly I mean, he just bets 13,000. But if there's any but bet Tom will consider folding to, it could be this one. Wug thoughts Samuel Squid Poker. I mean, if we're trying to like think of like it's big hands bet. bluffing with. I mean, he can have like he had like a five, a nine. Yeah, he's about to like bet the flop, so I guess he could have like random gut shots. Versus like the times he has at three. What is it that you like to do so uh, in this situation, or what you like I'm to just recommend? Gonna fold. I mean, it's an interesting size by him. It's tough size to play against for sure. I mean, he got me to fold. One of the best hands I could have. Uh, but getting it wrong, that's one of the spots where I think you've got to yeah. lean on theory a little bit more. Uh, Tiago not playing an orthodox style, as we can see with that Jack-9 float. you just got to... Tom Marchese of the New York yeah. Never Calls. Yeah, <laughs> the Mormon Book of Folding. Um, a couple of missteps here from one of the best Nathan players Ace in the Harris. entire league. Just goes to show... I don't know if he shows pre-flop like Ace X. I don't think so. Maybe check the turn. I like don't know if he's gonna double this board because I'm pretty like queen or eight heavy. But there's a decent chance versus like small size and he could choose to float. And probably not the queen. Yeah, Maybe he has flush draw. He's gonna stop for sure on a turn. Now we have four of a kind, so that's always good. <laughs> I'm not sure how to get value here. Uh, I think it makes sense to just bet pretty small. Because 
He might not really want to fold versus like a small bet because it could look like he has a draw enough that they're just getting like, I'm just trying to get to like fold. And if, so the thing is like a bet here might just work better as bluff, but when I think like Hansi calls a flop whip, if he called the flop like king high or like ace high, even like a jack high to an extent, like, I, I don't know if he necessarily is going to feel the need to like bluff with those hands, but you might feel the need to just like call a small bet to, to just like see if I fall through on the river when he's getting such a good price. He doesn't bluff anymore, um, so I'm gonna fold for sure here. If he jam, on the river at this point. Um, I'm gonna send a put it in for the rest. That's why I had to fold. And back to even stacks here, um, winding down the one-two level. That hand certainly took a little bit of while. Value. Marchese perhaps a little quick like with the jam bigger. there on the river. I think if he did arrive um, there with Jack Ten, uh, might have to think about it a little bit longer. Before I mean, it's kind of a shame if he just had like a double float of some sort that would have bluffed the river if I checked. But it seems more likely that he could have like a king high or ace high hand that. That just then check back. He doesn't expect me to have the ace, so... Okay, so we were just checking down our bottom pair, and um... Huge river here for Tom. We're lucky enough to... River two pair. I'm saying better. About 60% pot here. Something that I might consider doing if I just had like 10 high hand, no draw. Oh no. <laughs> so and, sick. Um, he calls quickly, so I think there's a decent chance he just uh, ripper to queen as well. Um, Ace 9 suited heads up for 23 red blinds versus someone who's opened the button a lot. Um, it's very happy to just shove. And, See what happens. I guess not, when I'm leaning over to the side over here, I'm I'm just trying to follow the action that I have Twitch up on my phone. So great to see someone of. That's uh, the reason why I keep just like going off screen. Looks like blinds are up again. So at this point, we have 40 big blinds total in play. Tom's success. Um, he limps. Playing for uh, hundreds of thousands, even millions. I think this is a spot where, in general, I'm probably better off just like uh, raise calling, but some just not shove. I mean, he trapped me earlier in the spot with aces, but it's hard to get big hands. Those blinds. What? Twenty rivers a six. Um, two pair, over two pair. This is obviously something we've come to expect. These great players able to value bet. Opening weeks with the performance of Olivia Bousquet, Pascal Lafrance. Um, but it is uh, coming to be standard. Let's start here in the first. I'm going to bluff here. Yeah. 
And now Tiago. Okay. It's better. I don't think he's gonna come with King High. We'll try and fold out the King High and, and the better Queen High. Her big Tiago off to a good start. Um, raise like three times or three and a half times the big blind there. It makes you a bit hard to play against because you're just like targeting his limps with like a variety of hands. But um, that's kind of just like laziness on my part when I have Ace Nine off, and it's a somewhat difficult hand to play if you get flatted. So I just end up um, shoving. He's starting to use a limp strategy, which is Wait, Leo, the same thing. Leo, but, uh, just a bet. I think if this match goes long enough, I just find try not to play too passively out of position versus limps because that kind of happened last time, and I was giving Olivier the initiative in every pot, and I mean. He did really well versus me limping just because of that. I chose to min raise with 10 8 and got a real dry flop, so. I'm just going to see Ben and hope to take it down. It's hard for him to do much if. Mm, I don't like to hand. call here. Because I think he. A lot of these lines just feel super bluffy, but he's going to take this one. I mean, I guess the obvious thought would be, well, would you really want to play a big hand that way when I've been kind of barely and bluffy? And I would think the answer is no, but at the same time. Can't just always be buffing when you check raise. And if it's a board where you think I have a lot of weak hands, it's probably pretty worthwhile to be like check raising some. It's bad for protection here. And so he limps and check, check, flop, that turn. Not too excited. I'd probably just Actually, fold if I didn't have a spade, but with a spade, I feel kind of okay. Just, just calling and. Nope, river jack, so I'm gonna check. Hope he bluffs, but huh. he has two pair, but it will not be bet. A whole new champion. It's just, and like the plus side of like a limping strategy is just that then he raises here, and it's like, well, if he was raising every hand, you'd be real happy to shove him with Queen 10. When he's like limped a few hands, you're thinking, well, if he's limping a lot of his like weaker, and like middle strength hands, his raising range is on average is a fair bit stronger. Um, but yeah, so I'm just gonna call and call the flop. Let's see where this goes. Great cheddar man. Cheddar cheddar Tom. So I guess this is a spot where we saw him like wimp 70 off, which is a hand with like good playability. And then he, he kind of chose to raise a hand like jack six, which mm, doesn't play that well. Jam so here. decides to make it. Um, not sure, but a nine he plays. 
pretty good free flow and that's probably a lot from these guys just playing more online than me and being in these situations more often um, There are with like 10-7. I just decided to check back with Flop. Uh, don't want to always do that. Sometimes you just want to like check back and consider like bluffing on the Turner River. So I did that here and I turned open under. So I'm gonna call and well, got what well in this case is a good turn. And if you're thinking like hands up, probably ended up bluffing on this on this mm -hmm. river. It's probably like 10-7 and 6-7. Otherwise, I had mostly good hands. So calls me the, with ace high or a. So I think I prefer to check here. I don't even know if the small size is good, but I think in his eyes, I'm repping more of like fin value than. Than like a real big hand. Like I don't know if he'd give me credit for checking back a flush draw here. So I think I'm just trying to bet a size to like fold out a an eight or a nine, which I think half pot should do that most of the time. Is the pot Merton? So Marchese suggesting he doesn't get to the river with many bluffs here, targeting the weaker parts of Tiago's range. Well. Uh -huh. With a subtle half pot. Why did you come in the turn? Um, I don't know if you come with king high in the turn, so. Oh. I don't think we check back the queen. I think you jammed the queen. Tiago policing up Marchese. Makes another good call on him. And two to one chip advantage now. If you guys are just tuning in, this is week five, uh, the final day of week mm -hmm. five of the Global Poker League. Um, this is uh, <clears throat> Detective Tiago Nishihima. It's been sent of the uh, Sao Paulo Police Precinct. Sao Paulo Police Precinct has been sent into Queens in New York to um, to arrest and bring in Thomas, uh, the, the biggest big cheese, of the biggest of cheeses in New York, the big cheese, Marchese, for his um, excessive bluffing and his perfected ranges and his balanced betting. And Tiago. That would have worked more often than the result where that one didn't work at all. And looks like he's going to win this one as well, so I go one and two again. But you again, Tom. It's all right. I don't think I've ran the best today, but well played by him. Has been really found guilty player. of losing a big flip. Nice to play with you. Let's go, Mats. Yeah. Vamos, vamos, vamos. Check, check, check. Ganhamos, amor. What a treat that was uh, seeing Tiago. You know, a huge mission given to him by Andrea Kari to go deep into uh, into Brooklyn, come out with some cheese, and uh, he did that today. Two games to one. Six points for the Mets. Yeah, for sure. Big call there with the 10-9 off. Really interesting because uh, Marchese uh, targeted exactly that kind of hand with his river sizing. Uh, but actually, uh, the way uh, the Decano, uh, Tiago Nishihima, broke down the hand, didn't wasn't looking for what bluffs does he play this way. Uh, obviously, Marchese centering his bet sizing around the fact that he didn't have many bluffs, but was like, well, what value hands can he play like this? Didn't believe that he would check back a flush draw. Didn't believe he would check back jack 10. Didn't believe he would check back a queen. Uh, didn't believe he would call the turn with the king high. Looking for reasons to police up the biggest of cheeses Policed him up, he did. Hey, you got to take him to showdown. <laughs> and, and the Show him down. And Look him in the and eyes. The win there. And I actually think Tom Marchese, no one to blame uh, but himself. 
Tom Marchese, the, the strength of his game and what's made him all this money, his, his ability to adapt, his willingness to exploit the tendencies of others. But here, I think he just gave um, Tiago not enough credit in many ways. Uh, thought that he wasn't capable of running big bluffs, made a big fold with the king deuce on the turn when Tiago blasted the flop for no real reason with 6-9 high, turned a straight draw. Uh, Marchese folded the best hand and folded a7 after betting the flop and checking yeah. back the turn. Um, you know, really, as Marchese himself elaborated for us, um, you know, one of the very strongest hands he would get to the river with, um, but making an exploitative fold, um, trying to take advantage of what he perceived as the weaknesses in Tiago's game. The weakness he perceived was that he didn't bluff enough, was not uh, aggressive in certain spots, um, and perhaps overfolding. And, you know, as a result, cost the New York Rounders three points and himself the match. Yeah, but luckily for uh, Tom Marchese, we do have uh, you know a rotating door policy here at the GPL precinct. We will throw him back out there yeah. uh, for Bryn Kenny and his I thought team. you were going to say, lucky for him, he is a multi-millionaire <laughs> and won't be you know losing any sleep. Yeah, no, I'm, I mean we will be you know we were are going to let him out of captivity after that uh, after bring, be being brought in and he will be back into the wild uh, as soon as possible t for uh, for Bryn Kenny to, to, to uh, he's going to have some more six max and heads up matches for him to play I'm sure he's he's obviously um, I mean to me maybe even the top talent on that team and so much talent on the New York Rounders you look at Jason Mercier Bryn Kenny and the like Tyler Kenny playing so fantastically so we are, what a squad we'll uh, do every single one is there someone I'm missing <laughs> who am I missing from the team uh, Kevin McPhee I mean he <laughs> will he look at last all of one well, hand okay, uh, well, Kevin J McPhee J Jason Wheeler do you want to say the Talk about bulldogs. So Jason Mc McPhee, uh, <laughs> Jason McPhee, Jason Wheeler. You know, really the the pit bull of the <laughs> of the GPL. That's a reference to week one. Yeah, you you diehards get it. You get it. Where, what's, where's Bjorn? Bjorn knows what I'm talking about. Bjorn uh, Gustafsson. Uh, I preferred it when you were wearing the Darth Vader mask. I think it was. Uh, what are you talking <laughs> about? I wasn't wearing a Darth Vader mask. That's ridiculous. Lounge. What do you got for us? We did too, Sam. Yeah. Congratulations, though, in order to the South Island Reds, picking up six points there and winning the first match of the evening. Tiago Nishiyama, are you on Skype? Do we have you there? Congratulations, six points. Vamos! <laughs> Vamos! Six points for your team, Tiago. You won the first game there and you won the final game there. You really seem to be picking up the pace and, and, and knowing your opponent by that last match. Yeah, actually it was three, three tough games. Uh, I watched all his match against Busquet. Uh, I had some notes on him. Um, I have to change my strategies uh, when I saw the other hands. And I'm pretty confident. I'm pretty happy about the six points. I'd like to have nine points. I think we've lost him. Is he there? Can we try and get him back? Monte Carlo Internet. Ah! Monte Carlo Internet. <laughs> oh, how unfortunate. He was just about to tell us exactly what was going on in his mind there uh, with the matches. Laura, I think what he was about to say is I am willing to play every Thursday from now on since he's defeated two very two heavyweights, Tom Marchese. Jonathan Jaffe last week. It is great, great, uh, boy, smooth sailing for the Sao Paulo Mets uh, yeah. for the past seven days now. I know. Andre Akari is going to be a really happy manager. I was worried about him at first because it didn't seem to be going in their favor so much, but they are really putting their foot on the accelerator and, uh, you know, getting the heat up now for the yeah. Global Poker League. You wonder, you've got to wonder if they're actually feeling the excitement that Felipe, Felipe Ramos has brought to the team. Scoring 22 of those points are Felipe Ramos's, so th that always puts a little extra pressure on the other players wanting to perform well, so good on them. Really fun to see, and of course our Brazilian fans are very happy with six points tonight. 
What a shame that we lost the connection there. Thiago Nishima uh, playing the Global Poker League. He was playing that match from his hotel room in Monaco, uh, having a few problems with the internet access over there. But, uh, you know, we will talk to him again eventually. Uh, he seems to be playing a lot of matches for the Global Poker League. So uh, we'll definitely get him back on Skype when he's in a different hotel room somewhere else. And hopefully his internet's a little bit better. It's a pretty amazing story when it comes to Nishihima losing, being shut out the first uh, first time he was into a heads-up match against uh, Pascal de Francois. Everyone thought mm, probably a bad decision to put him back out. No, Andre Akari puts him back out against a superstar when it comes to heads-up play. Jonathan Jaffe last week he performs you know, marvelously, really defeating all de defeating all the uh, the odds makers. Uh, you know, wanting Jaffe to win that match, he didn't. And then this week again, it's so really a great story. Uh, Tiago Nishihima is so early in the season. Yeah, we will be coming to the standings uh, a little bit later, but I believe Sao Paulo don't quite take first place, but they're still really close behind New York Rounders. Yeah, no, seven points ahead of third place Montreal, so really nicely set up for the, for the rest of this week. Taking a big gap there, and Montreal Nationals, Marc-Andre Larissa is uh, going to be playing the very next match of the evening. It's coming your way very shortly. It's coming at uh, 3.30 p.m. Uh, Eastern Time or 9.30 p.m. Uh, Central European Time. So on its way for you. And uh, obviously against LA Sunset, Olivier Bousquet. We keep talking about him. He's playing heads up here uh, on the Global Poker League near enough every single week. And he's crushing it. He's destroying it. He's the top scorer of the GPL so far and looking probably like he's going to accelerate that even further. Yeah. Sure. Right, we're going to go back to the boys, back to the desk, and take a look at uh, uh, one key hand, two key hands, probably just one from that match. <laughs> Laura, you're putting me on the spot. You're That's out why of I line, Cornelius. You are out of line. You are out of line. You're a loose cannon, Cornelius. We've got one office. key hand. One key hand. Always one. God darn it. Let's check out the hand, guys. So pocket threes again. No, we're kidding. <laughs> Queens against five threes spades. Take it away, Sammy. Tom Marchese coming in with a standard uh, raise here with five three suited. Obviously, as regular followers of the GPL heads up matches know, you've got to open a wide range from the button. Tiago Nishihima mixing things up and flatting with pocket queens. Really like this play. Uh, you want to keep some really strong hands in your range. And a three bet is going to look very strong off 20 big blinds. Tom Marchese checks back third player, uh, hoping to steer it to showdown and realizing he can improve to straight draws and such like on the turn. Turns a flush draw and Tiago bets out with the queens full value. I think the unconventional thing here, Griff, is Tom Marchese elects to raise. Normally, you uh, have on a lot of occasions the best hand. You s almost certainly have the best draw. Not necessarily a hand that you would automatically think top level Pokemon like Mar Marchese would turn into a bluff. But he suggested that he could force um, Nishiyima both off some strong draws. I mean, Queen 10 has a lot of outs against Marchese's hands. And also possibly some pairs. And I think that the way Tiago played in general that's pretty questionable. Yeah, you know, the problem was is that I think that this shove, um, it might be a little bit... It, I don't want to say the word lazy, because this is the thing, is that I understand what Tom said. If he thinks that he's folding as strong as Jack-9 when he shoves oh, here, printing. then I think it's then he's yeah. printing money. But I don't think Tiago does that. I mean, Queens versus Jack-9... The, the hand strength is almost similar, is, is almost identical in my opinion. So, um, in this particular spot, so um, yeah, a bit of a misread from Tom there. I think it was just you know he's just waking up again. This is a guy who makes so few mistakes, <laughs> and I think <laughs> over the course of these three matches, made a few yeah. glaring errors, well, which is so uncharacteristic well, of him. But yeah, yeah, of course, with a player like Marchese, we're just trying to get inside the mind. Yeah, of, you yeah. know, one of it's the never, yeah, we U.S. Really poker great, uh, greats. But you know, he's not going to check back five six on seven eight three. Yeah, he, he's not going to check back ten jack on eight seven three. I wouldn't have thought. So you can immediately remove the nut hands from his range. Yeah. He certainly wouldn't shove them if he did choose to check them back. So, you know, leveraging, you know, the plus is that you leverage, um, you know, uh, Tiago off King Queen High, which has maybe, but maybe if he doesn't have a spade, it has only four outs, you know. Uh, I'm just really trying to uh, understand where Marquez is coming from. And I think, as you say, a bit of a mis misstep, obviously, you know, Tiago doesn't have to have two queens, which is, yeah. you know, a snap call. Um, and, you know, that gave the first match to Tiago and really set him up for this victory. And then almost the opposite problem in that third match with uh, Marchese choosing to slightly uh, over-adjust to his uh, 
image of Tiago. Yeah, I mean, I got to be honest. It's it's, it's it makes me feel almost uncomfortable sometimes when it's our job course, to course, dissect yeah. and you know even criticize uh, the play of players that uh, you know. That some is of the best one of the, the biggest cheeses in the world. Yeah, he is literally the biggest. One of, of the hugest so, cheeses. Uh, Tom, Coming up, if you're offended, uh -huh. um, I'm sorry. Please but don't we, play me in poker. Tom, if you're offended, uh, we 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 will put things right by allowing you to take us both for dinner in Las Vegas. Yes, to a restaurant, uh, to an expensive restaurant of your choice. That's yeah, the kind of that, guys we are. The kind of place that would bring out cheeses and fine wines, but it's specifically cheese. And we'll also send you a bag of cheese. As a matter of fact, get me his address. I'm going to send you some cheese, Tom. Let's go to the lounge. Right, I believe we have Tiago back. Is the Skype working? Can we see? Tiago, you're back. Yeah, sorry guys. Can you remember what you were saying? I think we were somewhere in your thought process uh, talking through the hands there with Marchese. Well, actually I'm pretty happy because uh, it was a really tough match. Three tough matches. Um, I had to change my strategy against him because he was bluffing too much and then I had to hero call him too much. Um, on hands then that I thought he would never bluff. So he's that's why he's one of the best. But I changed my strategy because of that and it worked. Tiago, uh, a few weeks ago was your first match in the league. It was on your honeymoon. Uh, Pascal Le Francois ruined your honeymoon by uh, by beating you three nothing. I think a lot of people might have thought uh, maybe it's not Nishihima's time, but Boy, you have certainly done yourself some, uh, you know, probably gotten some, a lot of fans back. You've done so well the past two weeks. Uh, it must be fun to beat uh, legends of the game in Jonathan Jaffe and Tom Marchese. Uh, that's why poker is awesome. Nah? Uh, when, you, when I lost the three matches, I watched them again. And I saw that I made some mistakes, of course. But pas the... Pascal was uh, played very well, so he deserved to win. Then maybe I could win one, maybe I, I run bad in another one. So that's poker, of course. But uh, I'm I'm really confident, uh, especially in a heads up match, and I knew uh, I could I, I couldn't last forever. So. I know Jeff is a. Uh, it's his specialty uh, to play heads up games, but I I won and I when I came, uh, come back to to this match against Marchesi, I was pretty confident, and you know sometimes when a bluff when I when I bluff. Uh, doesn't pass when uh, when you have a cooler or something like that. Uh, it decides the game, so I'm pretty happy beating those guys. They are fantastic. You did great. Congratulations once again, Thiago. You were a bit disappointed earlier with your play in Monaco, but I'm sure you can be very very satisfied now. You've taken down another yes. match for the Sao Paulo Mets. <laughs> Go São Paulo Mets. <laughs> Vamos. Vamos. Thank you. Take care. See you next time. Thank you, guys. There he is, Thiago Nishima for the Sao Paulo Mets, taking down six points and winning the first heads-up match in the Americas Conference this evening. Let's see now where that leaves the Sao Paulo Mets in the standings. It's not quite enough to get to first place. Uh, they are still in second, four points behind the New York Rounders, obviously because uh, Marchese picked up those three points in one of the games as well. Montreal Nationals playing up next, Marc-Andre Ladoucheur's team. 48 points for them in third place. Bit of a gap now building, seven points behind second place. San Francisco Rush are in fourth. LA Sunsets, Olivier Bousquet will be playing next as well. They have 45 points and the Las Vegas Moneymakers struggling to get much going this week. They are in sixth place, but Jonathan Little will be back against Kitty Quo of the San Francisco Rush and he will be hoping to score them some valuable points this evening in that third and final match. We, we tend to say that there's chaos in the standings in this conference, and if someone can sweep any one of these two matches here coming up, I think we'll see even more chaos in the push, you know, to, with the big two currently. Uh, but Sao Paulo uh, in good shape, 
but may not be in great shape at the end of the night. They could still be in third position. And Montreal, LA, one of those two teams could be outside of the playoffs. LA right now, but Montreal could take that place in fifth place if, uh, if uh, things don't go well for Marc-Andre Ladeuser. Let's take a little look at that match. It's coming up very soon in just the next 30 minutes. There it is, match 49, and it's starting at 12.30 Pacific, 3.30 Eastern, 9.30 Central European. Marc-Andre Ladeuser, general manager of the Montreal Nationals, taking on the top scorer of the GPL so far, Olivier Bousquet for LA Sunset. Someone that is not giving points out easily at all. <laughs> One of the uh, best picks of the draft for sure so far. Interestingly, there were no sweeps at all last night in the Eurasian heads up. Uh, do we think we might get a sweep tonight? Let's hope not. I think I think we'd like to see the uh, the one ones heading into that like third match. I like when there's a sweep. Yeah, there's a okay. Well, Laura wants to see a sweep. <laughs> I will not I'm predict that. I'm not saying that. who. I'm not saying <laughs> who. I'm just saying maybe a sweep. I don't know. Uh, we will see. Time will tell. Two more matches coming your way this evening from the Global Poker League. So stay tuned with us here. We'll be back with that next one. As we said, Olivier Bousquet uh, and Marc-Andre Ladoucer fighting it out in the ring in less than half an hour. Stay here. <laughs> 